Welcome to day three of the World Cup. It was a smashing victory for Sweden in their opener against Germany. Offense was the name of the game for the Swedes, scoring five goals on 42 shots. That's bad news for the Czech Republic, who couldn't find any rhythm in a shutout loss to Finland. The 98 Olympic champs were outmanned in Helsinki. Can the Czechs find their scoring touch in Stockholm? Or will Sweden be celebrating again? Find out next as the World Cup hockey rolls on on ESPN. Welcome to day three of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey. We've got a doubleheader today. Czech Republic taking on Sweden and the nightcap, Slovakia and the unbeaten Canadian team. Barry Dapper, Barry Melrose. Thank you. I'm David Amber, and what a game we had last night. Canada squeaking out a 2-1 win against the U.S. Well, it was everything we hoped it would be. There was a lot of intensity. We had fights. Even Mary Lemieux dropped the gloves mm -hmm. and went at a couple of American players. We had controversy. Uh, the second goal actually hit the netting above, and if you know hockey, that's supposed to be a whistle as soon as it touches that. Uh, the Americans feel that they were maybe uh, uh, not cheated, but uh, they didn't give a break. You're going to see the puck go up in the air, and in uh, hockey, when it hits that netting at all, the whistle's supposed to blow, and the play's supposed to stop, and supposed to be a fake. Off. Mario actually pointed up to the netting uh, to show that it hit, but the goal went in and uh, Canada got a break there. So the Americans will use that as motivation the next time they play. Uh, it was an awesome game. The Amer or Canadians today got to look for a letdown uh, after playing the mighty uh, Americans last night. They got to be ready to play the Slovakian team today, Dave. Canada's going to be playing Slovakia tonight without Ed Jovanovski. He could be gone for the tournament. He got injured last night. Of note, though, Sweden and the Rep uh, Czech Republic, they're getting it on in a matter of moments right here on ESPN. JP Della Camera and Brian Englund, they've got the call from Stockholm. Thanks, David. Well, Team Sweden had to be pleased last night, Brian, with a majority of their game starting with the offense. Yeah, they really got it going. From the first period to the third period, you could see they were, they were really starting to fly. The Sundin line with Alfredson and Modine in particular was outstanding. I thought they controlled the puck about 75 or 80 percent of the time that they had it, and they ended up with seven points. I think that Sundin was the best guy on that line. But they still haven't solved the problems in goal. Tommy Salo did not have a good outing. He only allowed two goals, and yeah, one of them was on a breakaway, but I didn't think he played that one very well. And the other goal wasn't even really a shot on net. So I think that Sweden is still looking at who is going to be their goalie, and tonight it's going to be Michael Telquist. As for the Czech Republic, they don't seem to have problems in goal, but they have problems everywhere else. They really struggled against Finland, 4 0, they lost. I don't think they even showed up to play against Finland, so they know that. They want to get some offense going, and it's going to be two guys who played together a couple of years ago in New Jersey. Patrick Eliash and Peter Sikoro are going to be again together on the line tonight. Eliash is just outstanding. Over the last couple of years, he's contributed. New Jersey Devils, he will again for this team. And Peter Sikora the last two years in Anaheim has been one of their best scorers as well. They're happy and comfortable playing together again. Should have a good one tonight. Sweden versus the Czech Republic. But right now, let's go back to the studio. David and Barry. All right, guys. Sweden, they've never finished better than third in any Canada Cup slash World Cup event. They were third in 96. What does this game mean for them? Well, it means everything because you found out nothing about the German team. They were supposed to beat Germany. They beat Germany. They found out Salo isn't very sharp and Telquest is going in net. But today they're going to play a team. The, the Czechs had backs against the wall. They were terrible the first game. The Czechs got to respond with a little bit of motion in this game they never had in the first game. But the Swedes will find out about themselves against the Czechs. And what will we find out about the Czech Republic? Well, we'll find out in a matter of moments. It's going to be a battle of former MVPs. Yarmer Jager, Peter Forsberg. Will he be Peter the Great? Sweden fans hope so. Puck drops next. Welcome back to the Toyota World Cup of Hockey. Barry Melrose, David Amber, and for the second straight day, Barry, the which NHL. Is good, which is good. And the NHLPA are meeting in Montreal, trying to get some things resolved before the collective bargaining agreement expires September 15th. I would like the players to make a, a, a proposal. The NHL are making all the proposals. The Player Association say none of these proposals are any good. It's supposed to be a partnership. It's supposed to be a union between the league, owners, and players. Let the players come and say, this is what we want. This is what we'll accept. Then we've got two areas. We've got the owner's area. We've got the player's area. Then we can start negotiating towards the center of the uh, the two situations. And we're going to have representatives from both sides talking tonight yep. on our nightcap when you have Canada and Slovakia. So we'll hear exactly what the PA and what the NHL has to say as far as the ongoing labor negotiations go. Uh, Barry, really quickly, Sweden, their stars look great in game one against Germany. Their role players look pretty darn good as well. Well, uh, well the Swedes have changed. They're not just talented guys. No, they've got guys like Thomas Holmstrom who goes to the front of the net and runs into people. Nielsen, players like that, they do have defensive players. They do have physical players. They do have big guys that run into guys. Now you add that 
to Sundins, you add that to the talented players like Forsberg, they're a lot like the Canadian players now. They've got the grit, but they've also got the great skill. And they've got the skill, and they've got the depth. The but question do is, they have the goaltender? Do they have the goaltending? Because now it is 24-year-old Michael Telquist who's between the pipes, not Tommy Salo. This guy's only played 14 career NHL games. How's he going to do? I've played more next. than that. <laughs> Coming your way. Welcome back to Stockholm for the Toyota World Cup of Hockey with Brian Engblom. I'm J.P. Della Camera. Matt Sundin, who had the great game last night, gets ready to take this face off. Sweden will be in the blue with yellow trim. The Czech Republic in white with red and blue trim. David Verborny out there getting ready to take this draw with Sundin. The goaltending change we had alluded to before. Talquist in goal, Bokun at the other end. There is a decidedly different atmosphere here tonight. These fans are really charged up and ready to go to, to support their team against this Czech Republic team. Sundin won the draw. Jonsson takes it over, fires it in, and already it goes out of play. First whistle, next face off, neutral zone. We'll see how that emotion carries on to the ice because the building is rocking. Oh, last night it yeah. was okay, but tonight rocking. And this guy was a big reason it was rocking last night, too. Matt Sundin was brilliant. This line that's starting for the Swedish team tonight, it, it was absolutely brilliant. They, they led the way. Alfredson was terrific. Modine was terrific. They had seven points in last night's game against Germany. Yuri Slager, first man on it for the Czech Republic, playing it around the boards. Borny of the Columbus Blue Jackets clears it to neutral ice. Sweden takes it over there at center. That's Sundin. Knocked down right there inside the line for the Czech Republic. Slager finished the year with the Boston Bruins. Left side. Backhanded into the Swedish zone. Elfis leaves it off. It'll be interesting to see who has most of the puck control. Sweden is excellent at controlling the puck. They proved that last night against Germany. I talked to some of the Czech players. They said, we're going to play more defense than offense, believe it or not. This one hops around the boards. Jaromir Jagr's out for his first shift as the Czech Republic breaks it in over the line. Big slap shot is going to be stopped. The first tester on Telfus. It came from Martin Straka. Marty Straka, who had two neat scopes last year during the regular season, had a, he's actually had a terrifically bad time over the last three seasons. So many games lost to injury. 119 games over the last three years that Straka has missed due to injury. But he's flying here early. Got a good shot. Telquist came out and shut down the angle. And he possible try to win that faceoff back. Instead, it goes the other way. Jager got it back. Took a bit of a hit there. In the neutral zone. Sweden will continue to dump it in. Jorgen Jonsson's line is out there. They were a good checking line last night. Had a few chances to score, but did not. Into the corner it goes. Sweden keeping it alive there. Andreas Johansson was blocked. Marek Zidlitsky, the National Predators, played it up the boards. Kept in, and the quick shot deflected right onto Tomas Vokun. He holds on. Thomas Vokun was probably the only guy that played really well against Finland. I mean, this Czech team just didn't show up. They said it themselves. It was probably their worst game since the, since the 96 World Cup. Several of the players said that. This guy was excellent. If it weren't for him, they probably would have lost by about 11. He made 30 saves in that game. Sweden won the draw off Bokun and now flipped out of the zone. Knocked down by Schoenquist at the center line, but the Czech Republic take over. Sikora dumps it in around the boards. Behind the net now into the opposite corner. Schoenquist is there checking into Eliash. Sweden breaking out. Here they come. Near boards, Marcus Nielsen slowed down by the Czechs. Into the corner it goes. Very deep. Holmstrom was after it. Sweden continuing to move it along those boards off the check. Picked up there. Holmstrom towards the point. Olin kept it in. That one's knocked down off a glove. And the Czech Republic try to bring it out of the zone. This is going to go for an icing call. May not make it. Just barely gets over there. Sean Chris gets there. And the icing call is made. Thomas Holmstrom was outstanding in last night's game as well. He, he plays such a simple game that fits in well when he's playing with all such star players. Goes to the front of the net, takes up incredible amount of room, scored a goal on the power play. He was so tough on Ole Kolzik, the German goaltender, and I don't expect it will be any different tonight for Thomas Volkun. The game I was referring to for the Czechs in 96 in the World Cup was when they got beaten 7-1 to by the Germans. Shot is stopped in front by Volkun off the big drive by Kim Janssen. Now on that left side, it's going to be dumped in by the Czech Republic. First man after it was Vlasic. Goes back around the opposite boards. The check made there 
by Trianic. The puck comes free out of the zone. Oh, the tempo of this game is so different than last night. The Germans just were trying to hold on to the Swedes all the time. There wasn't much puck possession. But when I talked to the Czech players this morning, even guys like Peter Sikora, he said to me, well, we've been focusing on defense a lot, and I don't think we're going to play a lot of puck possession game. And, and he, he didn't seem to be, you know, shining me on by any means. He, he was just saying, that's what we've been focusing on. Hey, that's how the Finns beat us. Nice pass by Verborny over the line. Big shot steered away by Telfist and then cleared around the boards. Shot coming from Martin Havlat of the Ottawa Senators. Havlat battling there. He's coming off a career year with Ottawa. Zidlitsky couldn't keep it into the point. A break down that left side. Forsberg holds it. Takes the shot. Hit off the post. Peter Forsberg nearly had a goal there. And instead the Czech Republic come back on a two-on-two. -two. Dumped in there by Havlat. That has the crowd going again. Ruchinski tripped up there. No call. Flipped around the boards. Zetterberg takes it. The flip out of the zone. Neutralized. The Czech Republic get it back. Any play like that made by any Swedish player will get him going. But when Peter Forsberg does it, it really gets him going. He is really a rock star here in Sweden. He made a terrific curl and drag move there. Did everything but score. Nordstrom out there without the helmet right now as a shot is blocked by Telkris. Rebound shot is stopped. There's still a loose puck in the slot. Nobody can find it. And now Ragnarsson banks it off the boards. Sent back in. Telkris has been tested more than Tommy Salah was certainly last night in the first period. And you could argue throughout the game, Salah Ab only had to make a couple of Absolutely. Big saves. It's exactly what I was thinking. Already in this game, there have been more dangerous situations against Telkris than there were all last night against the Germans. Flipped around those boards. Out of the zone. Backing it up, Sean Christ with Olin, his defense partner. Daniel Sean Christ of the Atlanta thrashes off a stick. It goes in deep. Bokun settles it there. Czech Republic changing on the fly. Up ice they come, but they don't gain that center line yet. Dumped in. Sakura was chasing it down. Picked up by Olin. And the icing call is made. Well, this game's off to a terrific start, and a two-on-one after the puck jumped over Zidlitsky's stick, and you don't want to give this guy any chances. Peter Forsberg, he has Naslin going to the net on the far side, which creates the opportunity for him. It was Yeri Fisher that was the lone man back defenseman. He did have a back checker, but he played it like a two-on-one, and uh, when he tried to reach out, that's when Forsberg did little curl and drag and executed everything except putting it between the pipes. Czech Republic have already had more scoring chances in this first period than they had in the entire period the other night. Back hit by Holmstrom is stopped by Bokun. And the whistle will stop play as the bodies get together. There's a lot of strange stuff going on with this Czech team, and it always seems to happen in international competitions. In the first game against the Finns, they did not dress Hammerlick or Caberle, their number one and two defensemen. That, that amazed me. There was no explanation. They aren't hurt. In tonight's game, Josef Wasicek, Radek Dvorak, and Milan Heyduk are not dressed for the Czech team. They are not injured. So I don't know what Vladimir Ruzicka, the coach for the Czech team, is doing, whether he's trying to anger them. He says he's just trying to get everybody into the competition. But the Swedish players, when they told Milan Heyduk wasn't playing in this game, their jaws dropped right yeah. to the floor. We were all surprised. You and I, yeah. players on both teams. So was Milan. Yes. Here's the long shot. Telkris again, but he coughed it up in the middle. In the slot, backhanded over by Dopita. And it'll be a face-off coming up. That one hit the netting behind Telkris, who's been really challenged in the first period, unlike the other night in that Finland game where the Czechs only had 12 total shots for the game. They, they, they didn't play very well. So maybe Vladimir Ruzicki is just trying to get him going. Maybe he's trying to get them angry. Maybe he's trying to get them motivated that way. But all I know is I got a very confused feeling oh, yeah. from the Czech players here this morning. And Ruzicki seemed to be just in a horrible mood all day. When we, when we left, they were going into a team meeting, so you kind of wonder what was maybe said there. Here is Sweden digging it free behind the net. Scoreless opening period from Stockholm. Turnaround Alfredson is saved by Volkun. So the goaltenders are getting it done at both ends of the ice. It's pretty wide open at the start. The, the interesting thing about this Sundin line with Sundin, Modine, and Alfredson, Modine and Sundin are both huge men. Alfredson's a good size, but he's the one actually uh, in last night's game and in tonight's game is actually more effective, effective down low in the tough areas than the other two guys are. Havlat looking to set up. He came around or tried to, but it was poke checked away from him. Wanted to make that big move in front instead. Naslin's pass. Lidstrom fires it up for Forsberg. He holds. That one's deflected, knocked down. Czech Republic skating back with it. Over that center line. Chinsky took the hit from Ragnarsson as it's dumped in behind Telfrist. 
I think we're going to see more from this big line of Sweden in tonight's game with Naslin, Forsberg, and Zetterberg. They were fairly quiet, still sort of working out the chemistry thing last night. They look like they got some jump tonight. Icing is the call. It is scoreless in the opening period between Sweden and the Czech Republic. ESPN's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. And the Lady Killers, the Laugh Out Loud comedy coming to DVD September 7th. Back inside the Globe Arena in Stockholm, a quick whistle will be another face-off coming up in the Sweden zone. You're watching our continued coverage of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey, Sweden and the Czech Republic. Right now, if Sweden were to win this game or even get a tie, they would take over first place in the European pool with Finland being idle tonight. Off that draw, Slager, weak shot, stopped there and cleared out in one motion by Ragnarsson. Played forward and then lost there. Sweden getting it back, and then they'll just dump it in. Long chase for it. Picked up by Caberlight. Flip out pass. Near side. Yager played it back. Not a good pass at all. Caberlet, the Toronto Maple Leafs, recovers. Thomas Slater. Caberlet, excuse me, JP. Thomas Caberlet is excellent at moving the puck out of the zone, and that'll be big for the Czechs in this game. Because the Swedes are so good with the puck, especially in the offensive zone, guys like Caberlet and Hammerlick for the, the Czech defense, if they can move the puck up to the forwards, it'll be a huge... Uh, boost for them in playing against the Swedish team. Nielsen just took the hit along those boards by big Yuri Fisher, all 6'5", 225 of them. Behind the net, Holmstrom who plays in the same Detroit team as Fisher. Works it around Zidlitsky. Back behind the net. Fisher gets it off those boards. Kept in by Matthias Olin to the corner again. Holmstrom looking. Played it off the boards. Paulson was trying to keep it in play. Instead, it rolls over. Eliash attempted breakout pass for his former devil linemate, Sikora. Instead, it goes off the boards. Sikora getting it back from Reichel. Back out. Quick shot by Eliash. He partially fans. It goes in behind the net. Fast-paced opening period. Under 12 minutes to go in it. Held up there on the far side by Oland. Backhands it in. Both teams making changes. You might think that Sweden will change more often tonight. They played last night. Czech Republic was idle. Here's a long shot by Lidstrom. It stopped in front and poked to the corner. Flipped along those boards. Lidstrom fakes the big shot. Played it in front and it's deflected. Now puts into the corner. Banged along the boards. Modine after a two. The lightning left winger plays it behind the net. Taking the puck away from him. Crowd loves him here like they do Forsberg. Those two got the biggest ovation at the start of the night. That was really good work by the Czechs, though. Sundin is so tough to play against. He had no chance to walk out in front of the net the way he wanted to. Classic in the corner. Broken up there. Out at the left point. Quick shot redirected over the top. Near boards, Czech Republic with Blasic keeping it alive there. Luchinsky holds. Plays it in front. Shot was wide by Caberlet, who was joining the play. Banged off those boards. Czech Republic coming back. Sweden with a quick change there. Nordstrom gets it. Far boards. Snapped into the zone. That one is whistled down. ESPN2 is your ticket to more great World Cup hockey coming your way tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight at 7 p.m., Team Canada looks to go to 2-0 as they face off against Pavel Dimitra and Slovakia. And tomorrow, Team USA tries to rebound from their tough loss to the Canadians against Alex Kovalev, Alexei Yashin, and the rest of Team Russia. Also coming your way at 7 p.m. Eastern as the Toyota World Cup of Hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN2. And from all reports, what a game that was. Brian Engblom last night with the USA and Canada. Oh, physical. yeah. And, and all the players here, they want to know, you know, they were asking us questions. What happened? What happened? They didn't get a chance to see it, most of them here. Some of the Swedish players were able to watch a little of the Canada-U.S. game, but uh, most of the other guys couldn't. They want to know everything that happened, what kind of details we had. Great stuff from what we heard, and uh, Canada with their first win in the tournament. Sweden in this game out shooting the Czechs 8-7. to seven. Zetterberg, nice cut inside. Oh! What a move, but it was stopped. Oh, Zetterberg, a great move on goal. Forsberg gets it back. Forsberg holds it. In traffic, kept in there by Nordstrom at the point. Forsberg looking for it. It comes out to the right point. Ragnarsson keeps it alive, working it around the boards. 
Forsberg takes the hit there. Cabrillet's over there after it. It hops in front of the slot. Clear it out to the left boards and then set down ice. All the way down ice by the Czech Republic. It would have been icing. Kalkvist got it waved off. Zetterberg oh, the, after it. The big line is really going for Sweden. It's as if because the Sundin line carried them last night, the, the Forsberg, Naslin, Zetterberg line sort of backed off. It just sort of worked on their timing last night. That's the way it appeared. Now they're ready to carry the load, and they are right here. Kalkvist stopping that shot from the point. Jonsson chased by Jager, left for Ragnarsson. A giveaway there, quick shot redirected wide off Jager's stick. Straka after it, now it is Jager looking for Straka. Prospel there too. Marty Straka coming out, couldn't get a shot off, looks to play it out to the point, back for Straka, left circle blocked. He's plowed over there by Olin, a quick shot off Jager. And now, breaking out of the pack. Axelson over the line, takes the wrister wide of Okun, looked like it handcuffed him. Along the far boards, the Czech Republic will just be content to ice it on the next touch. We'll have the icing call. Ice. Breaking the action, great opening period, although we haven't seen a goal yet between Sweden and the Czech Republic. Back to our coverage from Stockholm. This is the turn. A World Cup of Hockey off the draw. Sweden will take it in with Janssen. Forehand shot went wide of the net, but Janssen will be able to follow it up on his own. Flips it around the boards for Modine. Freddie Modine looking to come around. Forced wide. Tied up there along the far boards. Alfredson keeps it going. Sweden have their big line out there led by the centerman, Sundin. Modine leaves it. Sundin tied up by Reichel. Left there. Sundin getting some help. Alfredson skating into the corner. Roman Hammerlick checking into him. A deflected puck goes behind the net to Sundin. Coming out forehand pass. Modine, and it rolled in. Sweden scores. The Sundin line rolling again. They're the ones that carried them last night. And, and this is just a couple of big men unstoppable down low. Freddie Modine is big, strong. He's got terrific instincts. And he's just playing with two guys who are so good on the puck. Look at Matt Sundin control it and work body. And, and Modine getting inside position, coming off the far wall. That was the key there. He didn't need a second chance. You see, he gets to the net first. And even though he is checked a little bit from behind, when you're in the groove and you got the magic touch going, those ones go in. Freddie Modine is second goal already in this World Cup. Meanwhile, Matt Sundin gets an assist. It is Sundin's third assist and fourth point in two nights. That's a big goal for Sweden in a pretty even opening period. First goal might be very important tonight. Uh, absolutely. And, and for the Czechs, you know, they had Robert Reichel and Elias and Sakura out there against that Sundin line. And Robert Reichel, who plays with Sundin with the Toronto Maple Leafs, would know his tendencies. But Robert Reichel is not big enough to play against Sundin, and it really showed in the last shift or two. He's 5'10", Reichel. Sundin listed at 6'5". Yeah. So Sweden, like they did last night, first goal. Czech Republic looking for this. Instead, Forsberg skates one against two. Forsberg tries to go wide. Now played by Slager. Right between the point men it goes. Telquist is way out to help the offense. Ragnarsson picked off. Telquist has to skate back and a goal. Quick shot save. Telquist there, stopping Yager. Telquist looks really sharp. I mean, he's really come out and challenged. He's been four or five, six feet out above the paint on every angle shot. Very aggressive, and he's looked confident, and he's perfect so far. An important game for Telquist because that number one spot is up for grabs. Salo played last night. Telquist tonight. Into the corner. Centering pass by Johansson is blocked. Touch pass intercepted. Jorgen Jonsson, ex-Islander, broken up there by Vlasic. Czech Republic skating back on the left side. From Bill Peter comes back to the neutral zone. At this moment, Michael Telquist definitely has the inside track as the goalie for Sweden. Even though Salo won yesterday, he didn't look very sharp at all. And Telquist has already looked way, sh way sharper. We talked about the Swedish situation. Great forwards, great defense. Weren't sure who was going to be the goalie. Telquist is the guy right now. Offside called as Chayanek was in over the line. 
the Czechs have really come to play here. They've really struggled in Canada Cup and World Cup situations. They've lost their last eight games in this type of tournament, and it's embarrassment to them. I referred earlier to uh, in 96 when they lost to the Germans. The Germans knocked them out of the medal round in a 7-1 to one debacle. The Germans called it a game for 100 years yeah. for them. Uh, and they knew that everything went just right and everything went absolutely wrong for the Czechs. The Czechs got off to a bad start in this tournament. But again, they didn't play their top two defensemen in this game. They don't have Milan Hayduk. A lot of us have been speculating that it's a little bit of a throwback to the old days when the Russians and, and the Czechs were accused of a little bit of a rope-a-dope, you know, in the early rounds. Because really, these first couple of games don't matter in the right. standings. You, in international competition, you have to win the right games. And Yarmir Yager referred to that this morning, actually, and he said, look, last Last year in the World Championships, we won three straight games and then we lost the wrong one. So their focus is on game four. Right. Game four is the must win. That's the knockout round quarterfinals. All four teams in both pools will qualify for the playoffs. It's Team a one versus four, two versus three. It's a really dangerous way to go, though. If you think you're going to really monkey around and take good players in and out and maybe try not to show exactly what your team is all about and then try to step on the gas in that key game, you better be right or you won't get a second chance. I'm talking about the coaches now. Look by the Czech Republic, not out of the zone. Kept in by Sweden. They want to put the pressure on. Holmstrom around the boards. Marcus Nielsen back for Holmstrom. On the left boards, Paulson looks forward and comes back into the corner. Nielsen takes the hard hit there. Fights off of it. Kept in at the point. High shot knocked down on the slot. Backhanded away by Hammerlick. Sean Chris pass up to Holmstrom. He paid the price with that check. Hammerlick, backhand flip, a bouncer in deep. It's going to be another icing call as it's touched right there by Janssen. Sweden leads the Czech Republic one to nothing here in the opening period. This is the Toronto World Cup of Hockey coming your way from Stockholm with Brian Engblom and JP Della Camera. Matt Sundin will take his face off, but this time against Dolpita, who was in for Robert Reichel on that last draw. Obviously, they saw what you saw. And now they just changed it again. So he was out there for the faceoff. They got the puck out of the zone, and Robert Reichel did come back. So they like to play Reichel with Eliash and Sakura because he's a better playmaker than DePita is at DePita's age. But they're worried about Sundin down low already. Here's Alfredson over the line, walking in, trying to play it over. That was deflected in the Czech Republic, get it back. They've had eight shots in the first period the Czechs have. They had 12 total the other night against Finland. The flip along the boards. Sweden moving it, that was Lidstrom to Jonsson. Under five minutes left in this fast-moving opening period, a completely different period than we saw last night. Alfredson was tied up. Checks played up. Straka, the touch pass as he dropped it there for Zidlitsky. Zidlitsky coming off a strong rookie year with Nashville. Zidlitsky's a heck of a defenseman. He caught a lot of people by surprise in his rookie year in the National Hockey League. They won't be surprised this year. And the Swedes are going to have to keep track of number three from the Czech Republic because when he jumps up in the play, he can make things happen. Off the touch. That one's going for an icing. ESPN 2 brings you more World Cup hockey action tomorrow. First run action continues. It starts at 1.30 when Finland looks to continue their winning ways. They're in Kelowna to take on Germany. Then at 7 p.m., Team USA looks for their first win against the high-flying Russians with Ilya Kovalchuk on board. It's the Toronto World Cup of Hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN 2. Yager holding it now as he tried to come out in front, hit the side netting, had no angle there. Struck it behind the nets. Marty Straka comes out, couldn't get a shot off that was decent, it was deflected on the far boards. That's Straka, now with the LA Kings after a trade last year from Pittsburgh. Yager tied up by Nordstrom, Huck is still free, Prospel is in there, so is Zetterberg, the two number 40s battle. Prospel takes it, played it in the slot, and partially fanning on it with Straka, the puck back in the neutral zone. What a terrific combination of talent for that check line. With this break in the action, we head back to David Amber and Barry Melrose in our ESPN studios. 
All right, guys, coming up in the Toyota intermission, we'll be obviously going, taking a look at this game. We'll also be taking a look back at Canada's big win last night against the U.S. Well, that was a great game last night. Canada and the United States were both super, played very hard, which we thought would happen. All the games against those two teams would be like that. And I, for one, love to see the Czechs playing hard, so it's nice to see them compete a little bit. All right, that'll be coming your way in just a matter of moments right here in the ESPN studios. Guys. Back in Stockholm, Team Sweden leading over the Czech Republic, one to nothing still in the first period. Quick shot, oh. Telkvist stopped that one, and he hung on for dear life, so there was no rebound. The Czechs are starting to get some motion going now. They're starting to get some feel to the game. Remember, they, they were so far off it in their first game against Finland, it almost didn't count. They haven't had the puck a lot in this game, but they certainly have been very dangerous. And what they're doing is they're activating their defense. That guy, Roman Hammerlick, is one of the best in the game. He knows when to jump up. He can score a goal. He almost did it there. Telquist had to recover at the last minute as Hammerlick was jumping in. It got by the Swedish defenders. Back to line action along the circle it goes for Vlasic in front. Saved again by Telquist. Stopped by Jonsson, who tries to help him out at the late penalty here. And it's going to be against Schornquist for holding. So the Czech Republic will have only their second power play of this tournament. They were 0 for 1 the other night against Finland. Now they'll have an opportunity. When you have this much skill in a tournament like this, these two teams, penalties are going to be huge. And Sharnquist, number 36 in blue, takes the first penalty here of this game. So the Czech Republic gets to come out and try it first. They're going to send out Jaromir Jager with Viborny and Straka up front. And these guys' ability to move it down low, you know they want to get it to 68 Yaramir Yager because he's good in any type of situation, whether it's in traffic or getting open in the slot. Meanwhile, Sweden, 4 for 4 last night on the penalty kill. 16.52, the time of the Schoenfors penalty for holding. Czech Republic with a power play and a chance to draw even here. Lead pass to center now. It's to Yager in the off wing. He'll flip it into the zone. Telfrist gave it away. It was rolling behind the net. Straka to Yager at the circle. Yager holding, controlling, snapped it in off Telkvist. Straka again. Baborny set up in front of the net. Yager goes there in front now, but the puck is not delivered. Flipped around those boards. Doug free. Yager fights back. Sundin gave him a pop, and now the puck is clear. I think these defensemen on the point for the Czech Republic are going to be really key, especially in this power play. So much focus down low on Jager and Strzok and everybody. You got Zidlitsky and guys like Haberle jumping in from the point. That's going to be key for the Czechs. Watch for Zidlitsky. He's especially strong in the power play. Setting it back, left point. Big shot way up high. Had everybody ducking in front. Back in the circle for Jager. Holding it. Right out in front. Strzok has sent it along. Less than a minute to go. And the man advantage. And Sweden will dump it. And change in the fly. Czech Republic will make changes as well. Bokun gives it off. Roman Hamilek leaves it for Robert Reichel. One to nothing, Sweden leading. Jimmy Jansen couldn't backhand it out of the zone. Kept in there, snapped wide of Telfist. Along the boards, near the point. Sweden takes it over. Naslund with Zetterberg, pulls it. Delayed penalty here. Loose puck and Czech Republic are going to lose a man. Isn't it nice when you can kill penalties with Marcus Naslin and Henrik Sederberg? Oh my goodness. And they get a chance because of it. Marcus Naslin wasn't quite as sharp as he probably would be a, another month from now. He, he did a great job controlling the puck, but then at the last minute when he wanted to pull the trigger, this one just kind of got away from him. Look at this. Pushes the defenseman back, tries to put the brakes on, and yeah, he was tied up, but he'd already lost the puck before that. Hammerlick was the defender there, number four. He had to back off on the play. Meanwhile, on the other side of the ice, Zetterberg was going to the front of the net, and Martin Ruchinski had to pull him down. But the ability of Zetterberg to spring Naslin put the fear of God in that power play of the Czech Republic. 18.38, the time of the hooking penalty on Ruchinski. It's four on four hockey for another seven or so seconds. And then Sweden will have a power play for the rest of the period, unless they score first. Naslin's pass, he finds Sundin in stride. Sundin, big slapper over the glove of Okun. An advantage here for Sweden. I'm on four. And the Czech Republic will dump it. Less than a minute to go in the period. But by Telfist. Lidstrom. Naslin. Marcus Naslin had eight shots on goal last night. 
and he was very selective. He probably could have had another four or five shots. Uh, he passed up some really good opportunities because they were just sort of experimenting and getting a feel for what they wanted to do on the power play. Four forwards on this power play unit. Lidstrom, the only D-man. Forsberg leaves it off. Maslin trying to keep it in. and comes free. Neutral ice. Backhand flip the other way. Lead pass. Nice touch. Sundin on the off wing. Backhand pass. Nobody can get to this until Lidstrom picks it up with a point. A far circle. Time running out of the period. Lidstrom. I thought he made a nice move there, but apparently it crossed over. You know, Outside. Peter Chianic made a really good defensive play there. I mean, he had to read where most of the talent was going into the open area. Sundin was taking the puck wide, and he quickly threw it back on a backhand pass against the grain into the slot. Chianic was, was the guy reading it, was figuring it out. And he's the one that got to Forsberg and lifted the stick so they couldn't get a good scoring chance. So many weapons going in so many different directions for the Swede. You need guys who can sort that all out. And Peter Chianic did a terrific job of that in that last sequence. Zetterberg was waved out of that faceoff. It comes to Alfredson with time running out of the period. Power play continuing on for another few seconds. And it will carry over into the next period. As it's dumped back in, Telchris will just stop it. And that'll do it for this opening period of play. Frederick Modine has the game's only goal as Sweden leads the Czech Republic one to nothing after one period of play from Stockholm. Welcome to the Toyota Intermission Report. Barry Melrose and David Amber. Sweden with a 1 0 lead, yeah. courtesy of a goal by Freddie Modine. And really a gutsy move by Swedish head coach Hardy Nielsen, starting 24 year old Michael Telquist. So far, so good. I think they had to. I think they gave Salo the chance. He wasn't great in the first game, even was against Germany. Both goals were suspect. I think they realized they can't win this uh, championship with Salo and that. So Telquist, and he's played very well. He's moving well. Swedes are going to score a ton of goals. The Czechs on the other side, they're competing better. They're competing harder. They, they look like they care a little bit, but they still haven't scored a goal in four games. Now they don't dress Milan Hayduke, arguably one of the best two or three goal scorers in the NHL. That's like going to a fight and not taking Mike Tyson along with you. Checks are very, very hard to figure out uh, on the ice and behind the bench. If you're Vladimir Rizitska, what do you tell your Czech team? As you say, they haven't scored a goal yet. Well, things are better because they're competing and they had a couple chances. Yager was much more active. He had the puck a little bit. You're still not hearing Eliash's name enough, Sakura's name enough, Straka's name enough. They had a power play there. They never really had a good scoring chance. So uh, the Czechs, again, are a hard team because they do not compete the way they should have. This team competed and played as hard as their opposition. This team on paper is as talented, if not more so, than any other team in the in the championship, probably next to the Canadians. Both Telquist and uh, Vokun looking very good today. We saw two pretty good goaltenders last I'm night, bad, though, and Robert bad. Ash and Martin Brodeur. Canada and the U.S. kicking off their World Cup play in Montreal. The defending champs in a little bit of trouble in this one. They come out looking to defend their title, but Mario and the gang had other ideas, and it got started with Martin San Louis. Well, San Louis gets a nice pass in four, and that line was dangerous every time they stepped on the ice. I love the fact Canada's got Canada on the back instead of the name of the players. I thought the story of the game was Robert Ash. He went into the game a question mark. He finished the game, certainly a stabilizing factor, and really the only reason this game was close in the first period. Canada had 19 shots in the first period, a lot of them very tough. Ash moved very well, controlled the rebounds, had a lot of poise for a young goaltender, first international experience. Ash looked phenomenal, but he was beaten there. Another power play goal, courtesy of Joe Sackick, giving Canada a 2-0 lead. U.S., though, did get on the board. That's vintage Billy Guerin. Great pass from the corner, good quick shot. Marty Brodeur did not have a lot of work, but uh, when he needed a save, he gave it. Right here, Mary Lemieux looks more like Claude Lemieux, <laughs> but that's what international hockey does. When Canadians and Americans are playing for their country, the emotions heat up, the aggressiveness heats up stick enough for each other. That was great to see Mario do that. It was an awesome game. It was exciting. Uh, it could easily have been 5-4, 6-5. Both goaltenders are excellent. So the defending Olympic champs beat the defending World Cup champs 2-1 to one your final. These two teams could be meeting in a gold medal game down the road. We will keep our eyes posted for that. Here's our ESPN broadcast crew from last night's game with their post-game thoughts. In Montreal, Team Canada would come away with a 2-1 win, a game that had Team Canada dominating early, then Team USA battled back. They took advantage of it, and then a third period where teams played pretty much even. And it was interesting that penalty trouble is what really got uh, Team USA behind the eight ball, and they did it early, and when you're playing against Team Canada as deep as they are, any kind of penalty is going to be trouble. So, so Team Canada got on the board with a couple of power play goals. The first one by Marty St. Louis of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Joe Thornton assisted on it. Then Joe Sackick, the great power play quarterback from the point, made it 2-zip. Then the frustration kind of took over for Team USA, and at some point you wondered, well, 
where was this going to go? This is just a bunch of emotion boiling over. Well, where it went was kind of a concerted effort to get back in the game. And Billy Guerin narrowed the gap two to one. Great pass from Scott Gomez out of the corner. But it was just a little bit too little too late. Team Canada finally dug in when they had to. And they were able to hang on. And the final analysis, if you looked at the overall of the game, Team Canada was a better team. JR, impressions? Well, I thought this was a very tough way for the USA to start. They're playing in Montreal, in Canada. You can tell that Canada came out with so much emotion. They were feeding off all the crowd, all the yelling, all the screaming. The power plays, as Bill mentioned, were huge for Canada. U.S. started really, really slow. Robert Esch played absolutely unbelievable in his first, first World Cup game ever. Young kid, but with the talent, he really showed that he's going to be the goalie of the future. With Mike McDonald going down, I think it's huge that the USA really bounces back. And they can remember, they can everybody goes to the quarterfinals, so it's, it's important that they go back and meet the Russians and make sure they get uh, bounced back under the ball here. Team Canada gets the first W for them uh, as they come away with a 2-1 to one win. And for Mario, their captain, a night where even he got involved physically, renewing old acquaintances with Mr. Konowalchuk. That's kind of the way this game was played. Team Canada 2, Team USA 1. Guys, it was a fantastic game, which we saw on ESPN2. And this is going to really be a battle of attrition over the next two weeks. We're already seeing injuries taking their tolls. Well, these two teams are glad they don't play each other again for a little while because it is such a physical game. But now Hatcher's out for the Americans. Leopold's out for the Americans on defense. Schneider didn't come to camp on the Canadian side. Blake couldn't play. Pronger couldn't play. Jovanovski got hurt last night. That's a huge blow to the Canadian defense. So the young guys in the Canadian defense are going to see more ice time, more key ice time. Guys like Niedermeyer and the veteran defense when him and Foot will even see more uh, specialized ice time for the Canadian team. So uh, these two teams, it was a great game. I can't wait till they play again. Last man standing might win this thing, but right now it's Canada with the edge on the U.S. of A. In this game, it's Sweden with the edge on the Czech Republic. Freddie Modine's second goal of the tournament. Sweden on top, 1-0. Last night, Team USA began defense of its World Cup title, but they lost 2-1 to one to Canada. Could have used some scoring punch from the likes of maybe Jeremy Roenick. 475 career goals, but he's out of this tournament due to injuries he suffered during the season. Now, in the last couple of weeks, JR has been making headlines for his uh, gambling debts that he's racked up. Some are calling it excessive gambling. Last night, he addressed that topic with our own Steve Levy. What's the last time you placed a bet on a game, on a football game? Whatever. January. Think you'll ever bet again? Will I bet again? I can't. On sports? Uh, I can't say no. I mean, if I go up to Vegas with my buddies or with my wife and stuff and pass by a sports book and want to throw 500 in a sports book, I can't say I'd never do that. But um, the odds are probably very, very, very high against it. And Barry, Jeremy also in that interview spoke up and saying he doesn't think this is a big deal at all. So he gambles a little bit. What do you think? As long as he doesn't bet on hockey or talk to people that bet about hockey, I don't think there's any problem here. I think everybody in the United States bets on football. I think it's part of our culture now. And I really think that if JR believes he didn't do anything wrong, he shouldn't have to change his lifestyle uh, because of this. Uh, it's a no story as far as I'm concerned. This guy plays hard. He gives his heart and soul to the people in Philadelphia every place for every night. They know that. Uh, this is what hockey is all about. A guy like this so I don't think he should change his life because uh, some reporter thinks that and again a hundred thousand dollars to Jeremy Roenick is not like a hundred thousand dollars to peons like me and you it's it's not that big a don't let me in with you you played in the NHL <laughs> but uh, to me yeah <laughs> there's a big difference let's get back talking hockey and tonight we're gonna have the second part of our double dip we'll have Canada taking on Slovakia and of course Sweden right now leading the Czech Republic one nothing through 20 minutes ready to drop the puck on period two the Toyota World Cup of Hockey rolls your way on ESPN ESPN's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Double Cab. Not just big, life-sized. Welcome back to Stockholm in the Toyota World Cup of Hockey when the second period starts. Another 38 seconds on the power play for Team Sweden, who lead one to nothing. Last night, Sweden were two for seven on the power play, but they gave up two shorthanded goals. We had a great first period here tonight. Both teams were jumping. Oh, right? it was great action. This is what hockey's all about, folks. This is some of the best hockey you're ever going to see in your lifetime. I mean, this is the best players in the world squared off against each other in a terrific environment here in Sweden. Matt Sundin is a local hero. You just saw Marcus Naslin a moment ago. They have a chance in the power play here to go up by two goals, and uh, Naslin will be a key figure in that respect. It looks like they're going to put Peter Forsberg back on the point for a change. That's a little bit unusual. Usually, it might be just for the face-off. We'll see, because usually it's Marcus Naslin back there. 
Off that draw, it's dumped in on goal. Telquist is right there. About a half a minute to go on this power play for Sweden. They're in blue. If you're just joining us, Czech Republic in white with the red and blue trim. Team Sweden advancing over the line. Marcus Naslin leaves it off. Sent in along those boards by Holmstrom. In the corner, the battle goes on. Up up there, Ryan Forsberg. Flipped up, and it's going to be taken away. Czech Republic, Verborny leads it in. Cyanic oh. missed the net on that break. And apparently that one hit the netting there. It's going to come back out. One second left on that power play, but... Remember last night, two short-handed goals given up by Sweden. It could have been another one here. Yeah, Peter Chianic's been really good in this game so far. He, he's been effective killing penalties. And, and this time, last shift, Matt Sundin, bottom of your screen, number 13, he just stumbles and falls going from forwards to backwards. That's Chianic on the fly. Tried to pick the far corner and just pulled a little bit too much with the right hand. Back to full and equal strength. Five on five hockey near board. Sweden will try to clear it out of the zone. And they do, a race for the puck. Johnson's after it, deflected away. Possible banged along the boards. Picked up by Possible again. Yager, now with the New York Rangers, off those boards. He wanted Straka, that's blocked. Possible kept it alive. Nordstrom sends it the other way to Ragnarsson, and his defense partner for Sweden. Banged out to the neutral zone. Axelson was after it. DJ Axelson last night blocked the shot, and we thought he was going to be done for the night, maybe yeah. even today. He's back skating well. He left early in that uh, German game. He got hit, looked like right on the top of the foot or the side of the foot, uh, but he's fine and back playing again. Delayed penalty, and now it's going to be called as Yuri Slager makes the touch. There's a hooking call. Andreas Johansson drew that penalty. This is a bad penalty here for Slager. So Yuri will sit out too. And it'll be another power play for Sweden, who are 0 for 2 so far tonight. Yeah, there wasn't really any reason for, for this one. He, he did pull the little, yeah, and Andreas Johansson played it up. But anytime you get the stick up under the arm like that and near the face area, you, you're going to get called. Face off will be to the left side of uh, Thomas Bokun. See, uh, Henrik Zetterberg out there for Sweden, he shaved that beard right down last last night. Henrik Zetterberg's beard, he had more hair on his face than Daniel Alfredson, Marcus Ragnarsson, and Matthias Norrisson had in their head combined. <laughs> but it looks like he's gone with a more streamlined look now. Zetterberg in for this draw with Gopita. Flex free, the checks clear it down the length of the ice. Telfris will leave it for Kim Jonsson, who's out there at the point with Matthias Olin. Right left side up for Alfredson. He'll dump it in off the backhand. Checks getting there first, but now it's Alfredson. Good recovery. Quick shot deflected and stopped by Mokun. The whistle will stop play. Thomas Vokun, sharp the other night, has to be sharp again tonight. Something you notice about great star players with the puck, they're so calm. And, and, and the Swedish team is really showing that here tonight, and particularly on their power play. They're not in a hurry getting in the zone. They're not in a hurry when they're being confronted by a, a Czech player. Uh, they're just making the right plays and getting the puck to the net, and there's a good timing pattern going to the net. They get a bit of a deflection. Good job by Vokun. Sweden will play at far boards. Center point, Olin shot, redirected to the corner. Zetterberg, nice move. Czech Republic bought that fake. Zetterberg out to the point. Jonsson, left side. Olin, big shot. Knocked wide of the goaltender, Volkun. Along those boards, the Czechs look to clear it. Kept in again at the point by Jonsson. Heads up play there. Moved by Modine. And now sent the other way by the Czech Republic on the clear down ice. You can see the opinion they have of young Hedrick Zetterberg, and for good reason. The kid has terrific talent. But uh, he gets a lot of ice time in a lot of situations, and he gets to play with all the very best players. Gaining the center line and a simple dump in. Bokun left it there. Zidlitsky, he's tied up, has some help. Stolen by Holmstrom, in front, quick shot, score. Sweden are back on the board. Forsberg, 2 nothing. Well, the Czechs finally made a really big mistake, and they got caught with everybody spread out and in the corners, and nobody, I mean nobody, was in front of the net. Thomas Holmstrom walked out to the front with the puck, and he did a smart thing. He gave it to number 21, Peter Forsberg. Thomas said, yeah, here, you take it, Peter. 
Great play, smart play by Holmstrom. Forsberg doesn't need a second chance. But the Czechs got all crossed up. They had one guy behind the net, two guys in the corner, and the forwards coming down to the point trying to catch Forsberg, which is too little too late. Power play goal for Peter Forsberg at 358. Holmstrom will get an assist on the play as Sweden leads two to nothing. Quick whistle from the opposite side, trailing referee on the penalty. Yeah, somebody got a stick, stick up there. Oh, I guess they just knocked the puck. Yeah. Oh, no, it is going to be a penalty, yeah. I think. Doors open, yeah. One of the Czech Reichel. players got clipped in the face. Robert Reichel's going. Holy smokes. Because it was one of his players that all, looked like he almost got cut. I couldn't catch who it was. But a few players had their sticks up trying to, trying to play. And uh, Robert Reichel definitely shaking his head. Okay, well, that's where the call was. That, that was initially... On the hit, Reichel had his stick up, and uh, he gets two minutes. So the Swedes come right back on the power play. Boisberg, careful with the puck, brings it over the line, and apparently too careful. One of his line mates jumped offside. And Thomas Holmstrom was pretty smart on that last play. Gives it to Peter Forsberg. If you're Thomas Holmstrom, even though he walked out of the corner with nobody on him, JP, goes to the front of the net. If you go there and you make a move and you don't score, and everybody in the building standing standing there saying, Peter Forsberg was standing right there. Did you not see him? <laughs> Simple. Smart play. Here, Peter, you try it. There's Sundin, power play continuing for Team Sweden, leading 2 to nothing against the Czech Republic game two of this World Cup of Hockey for each team. In the corner, flipped around the boards, Naslin kept it alive there, plowed into by Sikora. Puck is free out at the point, Lidstrom, Forsberg, holding. Peter Forsberg has a little room, takes it to the circle. Goes behind it at the Naslin, Holmstrom is taken down in front. Forsberg holds. Side netting. Naslin try to go short side. Volkun stops it. Good execution there. Nothing real fancy. Just trying to work the short side and the short distances. Forsberg down to Naslin. Uh, we mentioned that in yesterday's game, they experimented a lot. They didn't feel like they played as well as they should have wanted to, but they're picking it up tonight. ESPN and its family of networks proud to offer coverage of all 19 games in this Toyota World Cup of Hockey Tournament. Holiday weekend. Labor Day, join us on ESPNBroadband.com. That's all weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, Labor Day weekend. First of many events on broadband. Naslin and Forsberg have not actually played together for 11 years, even though they grew up together, went to school together, and actually played on the school team together. It's been 11 years since they played together on a regular basis. Must have been some school team, though. Yeah, I think they think. got A's in that class, too. <laughs> At least in hockey. Flipped out in front, and another score! 3-0, that one by Olin. Two straight power plays, they're opening up the game now. Matthias Olin did a great job here. He just got into the open area, and the Swedes are really starting to feel the flow now. Good hard work in the corners. Again, you see two Czech players there, and they're a man short. Now there's th three Swedish players come in and, and help each other, and then Daniel Alfredson just had a terrific job there. A really good support there. At first, the Czechs were in a bad position. Then Sweden realized that, okay, we've got to do, that's how you work hard and work smart on the power play. It's really difficult sometimes to work hard on a power play. That was good hard work. And heads up play by Daniel Alfredson again, who's a very bright guy. He realized, yeah, I got to get in the corner and help there too. They outmanned the Czechs three to two, got the puck, and Alfredson made the play. This is going for an icing call. The touch is made. It goes the other way. For anyone that watched the other night or even heard the score, four nothing, Finland over the Czechs, and now hear this score, and they must think that the Czechs have given it up. But they have played hard tonight yes. and are unlucky in a sense that they're down by this many goals. It's not been a lopsided game. Exactly. That's a very good point. I mean, the Czechs are definitely in this game right now. I think they're they're hanging their heads a little bit, but they're also kicking themselves, saying, "Look, we knew we couldn't take any penalties here. We can't give this Swedish team chances on the power play." And, and the, they're still doing it anyway. Caberlet backs it up. Sweden two for three right now on this power play on this night. Caberlet's over the line. Takes the shot knocked away by Telfist. In the corner, Ruchinski. Played it out. That was dangerous and deflected all the way down the ice. P.J. Axelson skating hard against Caberlet. Tying him up. They're tying each other up actually. Four players into the corner. Johansson makes it five. Doug Free. 
crowd appreciated Axelson's hustle there. Axelson's a smart guy. That, that's why he's out there in those situations. He read the play, gets a stick in the alley, and takes away the check scoring chance. Ruchinski stopped there by Telgrist. Lead pass on the left side for Axelson, who dumps it in. As the Swedes try to change up here on the fly, Vokun left it along the boards. All in there. Quick shot. Love by Thomas Vokun. He'll hang on and get a face off in his own zone. And now you see more changes out there. Sweden will complete their change, and the Czech Republic will send out Yager's line. The Czech team, th th their hockey and, and their history always involve politics. You, you go back to 1949 when, when the Czechs beat Canada. Then the following year, 1950, this is the old Czechoslovakia, the entire Czech team was arrested by their own government because they, there was accusations that all the players were going to defect. And you go back, Peter Stastny having been spirited out of the country uh, back in the 80s and, and, you know, taken to Quebec to come over to North America to play. And, and then even Peter Nedved back in 1989, a 17-year-old Peter Nedved with 20 bucks in his pocket over in Calgary in Canada playing in a junior tournament defects. His family didn't even know. So the Czech Republic has, you know, been involved in hockey and politics all the way along. Quick wrist shot in the slot. Nobody seemed to see where that one was going. Zidlitsky off the boards and now up ice. Yager. Yager's over the line. Has Prospol with him and some help there in front. Quick shot off the pipe after Telquist made the initial save off Fisher. Sweden backs it up with Sean Christ. Lead pass stopped by the big guy Fisher, but carried it over the line anyway. Nielsen's shot is blocked. Czech Republic getting it back. Prospol lost it there. To Sean Christ. Ice it comes. Sweden trying to change up. They may have had too many men on the ice. I believe they did. It's 3 0 Sweden here in the second period. Well, we told you about the two inning men on the ice for Sweden. What we didn't know was there was a bench minor as well. No. Explanation yeah. given on the Czech Republic. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The Swede got caught in a line change and they were trying to force the play up the ice. I, I have no idea why the uh, bench minor. We we may get an explanation, we may not, but uh, nonetheless, it's four on four. Someone must have said something by that Czech bench. In any case, some open ice here. It's unfortunate for the Czech Republic because it looked like they were going to have a chance, at least with the man advantage, to have an opportunity to close this gap. On this left side, Hammerlick plays it forward. Knocked down by Vlasic. Holding. Backhand flip. Centered in front. Intended for Dopita. Back at the right point. Vlasic kept it alive there. And now it's poked out in the neutral ice. Hammerlick of the New York Islanders takes control. I'm kind of surprised actually that Yuri Dopita was out there in that four on four situation. He's one of their, he is their oldest player. He doesn't move as well as he used to. And with the skill level that they have on the Czech team in a four on four situation, it's kind of amazing to me that they wouldn't have Sakura or Aliash or somebody else out there. Somebody with wheels. Left side. Played up to center. Hudson rags it. Four on four hockey. Less than a minute to go on that four on four situation. A lead here tonight for the Swedes. They scored three goals, two in the second period. On the far wing. Lead pass is deflected. Zetterberg gets it back. Deflects free behind Telfrist, who's been strong tonight. Had to make some big saves early. If you think, if he'd let in even one of those good scoring chances that the Czechs had in the first period, JP, I mean, it's a different game because the Czechs, you can tell, are just looking for, for some little hook of confidence, which they've been unable to get so far. Left circle. Jonsson missed the net. He was open. Zetterberg, one nice move. Makes it a second one as he controls the puck. Almost came away. He draws a penalty for the hook. Well, he's tough to stop with that speed there. So we'll give his team a man advantage. ESPN 2 is your ticket to more great World Cup hockey coverage. Coming your way tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight at 7 p.m. Team Canada looks to make it 2-0 as they face off against Pavel Dimitra and Slovakia. It's Slovakia's first game. Then tomorrow, Team USA will look to rebound from their loss to the Canadians as they take on Russia, Kovalev, Yashin, Kovalchuk, and the rest of that team. That comes your way at 7 Eastern with Toronto. World Cup of Hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN 2.
Ruchinski in the penalty box for hooking. He did not keep his feet moving when Henrik Zetterberg did. And you get to end up getting a penalty an awful lot of times like that. So again, Czechs putting themselves in a bad situation because this Swedish team is really starting to feel the flow on their power play. Four power play goals for Sweden in two nights. In the corner. Dug up by Holmstrom now behind the net on the forehand, flipping it over. Marcus Naslund out at the near point, and that got by Lidstrom. He'll have to chase it down. Three-time Norris Trophy winner. First team All-Star, six straight years with Detroit, but he lost the puck there. Holmstrom comes back to help him out. Now it's Forsberg. Forsberg with one goal tonight. Starting up strong, lead pass over the line. The flip for Sundin. He controls it somehow. Try to flip it in front. That was blocked. Naslund to the point. Lidstrom wrist shot deflected. Picked up there. Forsberg at the side over to Naslund. Just over a minute to go on the power play. Naslund snaps it. That's deflected off the netting. It'll be a faceoff coming up. So much puck movement with everybody on that unit able to move that puck, it seems it will. Yeah, and, and the Swedes were really smart the way they moved it, too, because they didn't want to give up the puck at any time. Eliash and Sephora got out there for the Czech Republic team to kill the penalty. And similar to what we saw with Zetterberg and Naslund in the first period, when you get skill level like that killing penalties, you have to show them respect, too, and you can't turn pucks over and give those guys a chance shorthanded. Hammerlick lead pass to Reichel. Shot his glove there. And Telfris thought about playing it but now holds on there'll be a face off in his end with under a minute to go on the power play for Sweden well the goaltender situation will go on throughout this tournament for the Swedish team that's just the way it is and Michael Tel Telquist has been superb he's been absolutely perfect so far in this game and and he is the one that is the guy in the driver's seat right now uh, until you know he makes a mistake or shows some kind of cracking I I'd say you're gonna see Telquist from here on in Here's Alfredson playing it over to the left side in front. And 10 for Modine, who couldn't get that stick down. Modine holds it at the right point. Olin points him in the right direction. Modine goes forward. Big shot. Stopped away. Ivo Kuhn near boards it goes. Our play continuing on for Sweden. Right circle shot. Alfredson blasted wide. Oh, they work in the seams well. That was a terrific bang-bang play. Alfredson went to the opening. The puck came. He shot right away. Nothing the Chucks could do could defend that. Big shot, Janssen save. Rebound back in to score. Zetterberg. I wonder if they start thinking about giving Thomas Volkun a rest because the Swedish team is really starting to jump and the Czechs are looking more dejected all the time. This is just quickness and execution. We mentioned the Zetterberg to Alfredson shot before. The hard work coming out of the corner. Alfredson getting the puck to the point. And Zetterberg just with hard work. He'll come from the right side of your screen out of the corner to the front. It's just a shot on net. The Czechs are looking to see if they can deflect it, if they can stop it. They can't. And they have not accounted for Zetterberg coming out of the corner. He gets to the loose puck. And there's not much Volkun can do about that. Three power play goals here in this second period to really open things up for Sweden. And how about Janssen? Most of his shots have been right on target the last couple of nights. Another penalty coming up here for hooking. 4 nothing. Sweden right now taking control of this game in the second period. Welcome back to ESPN and ESPN 2's continuing coverage of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey in the box. Axelson at 10.44, two minutes for hooking, so the Czech Republic have an opportunity here in the power play. Let's see what they do. Strzok on the left side of Vaborny, now in deeper, flipped in front, and it's deflected free. Sweden can't clear, kept in nicely by Straka, and then he lost it. Cleared out of the zone, the chase is on. Johansson of the National Predators chasing him down. The tendency in a situation like this for the Czechs is to try to win the game on this power play. Obviously, you can't because you're down by four goals. You put so much pressure on yourself to perform and to score that your mentality is almost like we're trying to win this back right now. you got to guard against this. Just start moving the puck around. Get a feel for it. Get some momentum going. There's still time. Lead pass right side. Vermorny dropped it off. Off those boards. And Tenefa Straka, he kept it rolling. Turn around. Last by Wagnerson off the boards. He's able to clear. Still over a minute left in the power play for the Czech Republic. But they're looking for their first shot on it. Jager pokes it ahead. And crossbow backhands it in deep. Sean Chris goes after the penalty coming up here. 
And let's see. It's on Sweden. So they're going to have two in the box. Obstruction hooking. Andreas Johansson, I believe. Or Nielsen. Yeah, number 18, Nielsen. not 10. 18 is Nielsen. So it'll be a five on three situation. But unless the Czechs can get their, their act together better, it's not going to make much difference because they're just not handling the puck as well as they would like to. And give the Swedes credit. Look at the checking there. Nielsen didn't like that call much no. at all because Yager looked like he, he kicked his foot out from underneath him. Nielsen was looking, you're kidding me. I'm the one getting a penalty there? Well, now it's a five on three for about 58 seconds. And the faceoff was won there by Sweden. That will kill off some time. That's a good faceoff win right there. Matt Sundin, I don't think he lost a faceoff all night against the Germans. He is just outstanding in that faceoff circle. Over the line, Vlasic holes. Looking into the corner. Around the boards, they have Dopita out there right now in this five on three. Rifles at the point. Checks get into the circle deep. Looking. Zidlitsky, and he broke the stick. Sweden will take it back. Sundin flips it off those boards, catches up to himself, kills more time with it. 20 seconds left. And then Sweden will get Axelson back. And it will just be a five on four. Dropped off for Prospel. Snaps it. Oh, oh Telquist came up with that save. Puck is poked free. Lidstrom clears. Vinny Prospel has a terrific wrist shot. He got penetration there, and he snapped that one off so quickly. Telquist had to fight that one off. Sikora trying to leave it off now. He'll play it in the slot. Saved by Telquist again, stopping Robert Reichel. Sikora to the corner. He'll get it back. Peter Sikora, former New Jersey Devil, lost it there. It comes out at the right point area. Reichel kept it in. Prospel pokes it into the corner. Sikora tried to flip it for Vlasic. Couldn't get the stick down. Hammer looks in deep. Reichel. Prospel holds. Far boards. So five on four right now for another half a minute or so. Quick shot. Save again. Right pad save by Telquist. Out in front, picked up by Axelson, whose penalty had expired a while back, and he stayed out there to kill some of his penalty. And now he'll flip it in. Talquist again, sharp. He is perfect. I mean, he is really on top of his game. Michael Talquist is extremely quick. He's reading the plays. He's already anticipating where the puck is going to go, and he's and he's confronting the shooter perfectly so far. Outstanding work by Talquist. At the point, that shot going in wide, banged off the boards, and the penalty is over on Nielsen. So it's back to five on five hockey. So Sweden, it wasn't a five on three for two minutes, but it was a good portion of five on three hockey. And the Czech Republic only had maybe two chances there in the end. Czechs will take it over the center line. Peter dumps it in around the boards. Sweden can't clear it out. At the point, big shot, steered away. Olin off those boards, pitching in, keeping it live in front. Nice touch pass. Oh! One too many. Along the boards, Luchinski kept it in, into the corner. Towards Havlet, that's blocked. Havlet spun around. Yuri Slager in deep. And now it's whistled down. Three, four nothing in favor of Team Sweden with about five and a half to go in the second. The Toyota World Cup of Hockey continues from Stockholm. One scoreboard clock here says three nothing Sweden, but trust us, it's four nothing. Thanks to three power play goals in the second period. The best chance the Czech Republic had, they just missed that last net. Otherwise, they could have at least narrowed the gap to make it 4 1. <laughs> Same building. It's 4 0 on one scoreboard yeah. and 3 0 on the other, yeah. the other end of the ice. Up on the right side, Alfredson holds. Daniel Alfredson, strong tournament thus far for Sundin in the corner. He can't get it, but he has help. Modine to Alfredson. Nice touch pass. He'll settle the rolling puck. Modine in front. Alfredson's backhander. Well, Kuhn got a piece. And the corner goes. The Czechs trying to move it out of the left side for Prospel. Kept in. Alfredson tried to spring Modine. Almost did. On the left side, it's Prospel. Under five minutes to go in the second period. Sweden has scored three power play goals in the second period to open it up. Yager tied up there, got free for the moment. Yager came out in front, stopped in front. Prosper will take it back at the side. In for Yager, couldn't get it. Telquist poked it away. It's still loose, and now Telquist will pounce on it. Oh, it's a frustrated group from the Czech Republic. 
ESPN 2 brings you more World Cup hockey action tomorrow as preliminary round action skates on starting at 1.30 when Finland looks to continue their winning ways. They'll travel to Cologne to take on Germany. Then at 7 p.m. it's Team USA taking on Russia. The tour at a World Cup of hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN 2. Nordstrom and Ragnarsson did a really good job there helping out Telquist. It was a three-man effort to keep Yaramir Yager and his line from scoring in that last shift. That's the best work we've seen offensively from the Czechs in this period. And still nothing to show for it. Forsberg comes out in front. Big collision in front. Three players went down as the Czechs take it up ice. Offside. Jumping in ahead of the play was Ruchinski. So it'll be a faceoff coming up. Well, the great scoring chance that was missed before we went to that commercial break was Chianic making the double pass to Dopita in front of the net. Unfortunately for them, you know, they couldn't come away with anything there. One too many passes, uh, maybe a little bit too cute, but it's an instinctive thing that's done. And then Yager's line comes right back. It almost puts it in. So I, I think the Czechs are starting to feel like we got nothing to lose. We, we have to get something going. Or they're, they're getting away from their defense first mode, I think, and saying the heck with it. And I think these players have just taken it on themselves and go, Come on, boys. Let's just get it and go. Zetterberg goes back after it. Picked up by the Czech Republic. The Borny looks to get it back, and he does. Nice stick work, but it's sticked away by Telfist. Into the corner. Now the flip out of the zone. It bounces free. Let's see we've got a penalty from the trailing referee, and two players fighting. Zetterberg and then Havlat, it looks like, right in front of the bench. Yep. Didn't want to get involved, and I don't think he dropped the gloves, did he? Can't see them. Nope, he still has his gloves on. Yeah. It was an elbowing penalty at first that was called. We'll settle it in a moment, but right now with this break in the action, we head back to David Amber and Barry Melrose in our ESPN studios in Bristol. Coming up in the second intermission, we will detail what's going on with the NHL and NHLPA meeting for a second straight day in Montreal. As far as this game goes, Barry, uh, will the Czech Republic ever score a goal? No, I don't think they will because they're not playing hard enough. At least Martin Havlitz showed a little bit of emotion, but in the third period, Czechs got to come out and win something, win a period, just do something positive. It's been five periods now. They've showed no emotion, no heart, a little bit better today, but certainly that team with that talent level not scoring in five periods is a joke, and they got to look inside themselves a little bit. And as JP mentioned earlier, eight straight losses yeah. at the Canada Cup and World Cup. We'll get it back now to the broadcast crew in Stockholm. We saw the first penalty, it was an elbow on Ruchinski and then the roughing on Zetterberg. So there are two Czech players yeah. in the penalty box. And so the Czechs will definitely end up shorthanded in this situation. It looks like it's going to be a five on four power play opportunity. There's Zetterberg in the penalty box. After the initial call was going up, the referee had his hand up. Zetterberg got into it with Martin Havlat, but the original penalty was on Ruchinski for elbow. It didn't look like Havlat did enough to warn it, but maybe we missed something. In any case, he sits it out. So. Power play with another 150 or so left on it. Team Sweden in control right now. And thankfully, both clocks now say the right score. 4 nothing on both sides. They changed them during that last break when we went back to the studio. This is Lidstrom behind the net for Sweden. Up 4 nothing in a wide open game right from the start. But the power play has been a big difference tonight and Telquist for Sweden. Chris will leave it off now for Lidstrom. 120 remaining on the man advantage. Lidstrom fires it in. Volkun settles it there. First guy on it is Jonsson. Zidlitsky gets it now around the boards and just clears it past Lidstrom. It goes the length of the ice. Still over a minute to go on the power play for Sweden. Yuri Fisher just wasted Jorgen Jonsson along the boards there. He outweighs him probably by about 35 pounds and is about four or five inches taller. He used all of it on Jorgen Jonsson. Alfredson far boards into the corner. He'll get it back. Daniel Alfredson holes and a whistle from behind. The referee was pointing up at the scoreboard. It may have been something that malfunction. Right now we remind our fans that on September 7th you can make a difference by showing your spirit. It's simple. Were your favorite teams in peril to work that day? 
And in exchange, each participant can make a donation of $5 or more to the V Foundation and help benefit cancer research. Anyone can participate, including schools, companies, and individuals. Join ESPN and many others by declaring September 7th as Show Your Spirit Day. For more details and to sign up, log on to www.jimmyv.org. That was strange. Uh, they're right in the middle of the play. They just sweeps at the puck in the power play and the offensive zone, and the whistle just blew. Something to do with the clock. Up above, the smoke. other clocks are okay. They look behind the goals anyway, and the trailing referee immediately pointed up to the clock. It's right above the ice. Janssen and Modine talking things over. Power play situation is just getting better and better for the Swedish team and they have so many different looks and feels so they get the uh, Naslin out there along with Forsberg and Zetterberg and they're dipping and diving and working out of the corner then they throw Thomas Holmstrom out there and he just goes to the front of the net and drives Volku nuts you got Modine moving from the front of the net from the corner and back again using that huge body everything working right now for the Swedes especially the Sunday line with 11 points in two games and it's just getting started 11 points in two games for Alfredson, Sundin, and Modine. Now, Sundin and Modine played together when Modine was part of the Toronto Maple Leafs a few day, a few years ago, rather. Modine and Sundin actually played a lot as line mates, probably about 50% of the time, Freddie told me. And then Alfredson, of course, is an arch rival of uh, Sundin in particular, playing for the Ottawa Senators. But uh, he certainly has good feel for these two guys, and they continue to be extremely, extremely impressive in these two games this week. One goal and three assists tonight. There's the problem, but that's on the scoreboard up above, not the scoreboards behind the goals. So that's why they stopped. That's about the only thing that could stop this game, unlike last night where Germany would try to slow down the play. This has been wide open right from the start. Yeah, it really has. I mean, I think the Czech team came out with a good game plan to start because they knew Sweden had dominated the Germans and it was a very low key game and, and the tempo was very slow. The Swedish team only picked it up when they wanted it to. So the Czechs came out and really set the tone and tried to catch Sweden, you know, maybe a little off guard, but it didn't work. The Swedes didn't look their real sharpest early on, but they got it going early. While we continue on with this break here, we go back to David and Barry in our ESPN studios, guys. All right, guys, have a little break there in Stockholm. Barry, at the beginning of this tournament, you said Canada was the team to beat. Sweden doing anything to change your mind? Yeah, they are. They look great, and the goaltending, Telquist, giving them solid goaltending day, which they haven't had in a long time in world competition, going back to the Olympics. But I think when you play the Swedes and the teams that are going to be playing the Swedes, especially the Finns, you got to stop them in the neutral zone. You can't let them come flying through with speed. You got to put a body on them and slow them up, but you also got to make sure you don't take any penalties because their power play looks great right now. Forsberg's not even their best player right now. That goes to Sundin. Uh, they got two lines. They're scoring consistently. They got a great power play. Uh, but again, the Czechs aren't getting enough shots. Telquist has looked good tonight, but certainly he doesn't look like he deserves a shutout. So I think that's the main thing. You got to put some rubber and make that Swedish team play a little bit of defense. Czech Republic's making uh, definitely making every yep. goaltender look good right They're now. They're making they everybody look good. They haven't scored a goal this tournament, guys. Well, right here you're going to see Holmstrom turn over in the corners. It like he got no help from his partner. Holmstrom's got great vision. He also a good passer. You see them winning battles here. Uh, come down to win the three on two battle in the corner. Great pass to Olin because the Czechs are putting all four guys down in front of the net, killing penalties. If you're the coach, Hardy Nielsen, are you going to run now with Telfris as long as he can? Yes, because uh, Salo just hasn't looked good. Salo didn't look comfortable against Germany. We know what happened against Belarus in the Olympics in 2002. Basically, he was the most hated man in Sweden for a couple years there. It just doesn't look like he's comfortable in net right now for the Swedish team, Tommy Salo. Certainly, as a more experienced goaltender, you mentioned David Telfris only played 14 games in the NHL, but he looks confident right now. He's moving well. The team looks like they believe in him. They're more aggressive in front of him because they know he's going to make the save. So I think Telfris is a guy right now for the Swedish national team. He's got a 4 nothing lead as we're getting set close for the third period action. Guys, though, first, let's finish up the second. Clock is fixed, apparently, but there's no time posted on the power play. Janssen fires. Well, Kuhn made that save. I'm not sure he even saw that. I think they're going to stop play again because of the clock situation. And apparently, the, that is the case. Yeah, the fans are getting upset now. You know, the, the fans in, in Europe are really talented because 
if they're upset, they, they don't just boo. I mean, any anybody can boo, right? I mean, I can boo, but I can't whistle. You have to be talented oh, here yeah. to be upset. Yeah. They whistle when they're upset yeah. here. Yeah. These fans are talented. And so is Peter Forsberg, yeah. who made that pass from right beside the net all the way out to the point to get that good scoring chance before the Czechs were able to clear the play. So far, no one has been able to boo and whistle at the same time. <laughs> so far, unless you want to give it a go. 4 nothing. Sweden is leading here. And right now, we remind you that ESPN2 is your ticket to more great World Cup hockey coverage. Coming your way tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight at 7 p.m., Team Canada. Second game in as many nights. They'll face off against Pavel Dimitra in Slovakia as they open up World Cup play. Tomorrow, Team USA looks to rebound from a tough loss to Canada as they take on Russia. Kovalev, Yashin, Kovalchuk, Gonchar. It's a star-studded team from Russia. That's coming your way at 7 p.m. Eastern. The Toronto World Cup of Hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN2. I'm just not talented enough to be a fan here in Europe. Absolutely. <laughs> I just That high pitch whistle thing, it, it, it's tough. It's a hard thing to do. It's tough. It's, it's boo. unfortunate. I, boo. I can boo. You know, that's, that's no problem at all. Anybody can do that. It's unfortunate, though, about the timing of this because the game has been good. Yeah, I know. It's been up and down. All the and momentum. now the clock. Yeah. Well, Peter Forsberg, there's so many stats about him that are just incredible. In, in 1993, the World Junior Championships, Peter Forsberg at the World Junior Championship, 31 points in seven games. That is incredible. That's Gretzky, Mario Lemieux kind of stuff. They've restarted it, but there is no penalty clock posted up here. Less than a couple minutes, though, to go in the second period that has belonged to Sweden, thanks to their power play. And they continue on here at the left circle. Olin skates out. Neutral zone. Al puts it over the line. Daniel Al puts it, holds it on the far side. Penalty's now over. Here's a quick one. Stopped there by Moku. Back to five on five hockey. Near the end of the period. Janssen again. Wristing it. Save Moku. He was screened in front by Forsberg. And Peter Forsberg's really glad that shot didn't hit him. He was trying to get in the face of Moku. That one went right by his knee, and he had that look on his face like, oh, good. I'm glad that didn't hit me. Whistle will stop play on the icing this time, not for a clock malfunction. And the next faceoff will go back in Telfris End, where he has been sharp tonight when he's had to be. I mean, the Czech Republic have had a lot of shots tonight, more than they had the entire night when they had just 12 against Finland in their loss. They've had a jump in their stride tonight, but as you said before, had they scored in that opening period, yeah. would have lifted them. Instead, that second period was a disaster. They're just looking for something, something to give them a little bit of life, and Telquist has taken all of that away. Sean Chris behind Telquist, looking to move it. Less than a minute to go in the second period. Lidstrom flips it high, and it goes off the netting. There's another break here. With Sweden on top, four to nothing the other night. Five different players scored goals for Sweden, and tonight, four different players. There's Nick. Look at Nick Lidstrom, who plays for the Detroit Red Wings. His coach, Dave Lewis, had the best description of Lidstrom I've ever heard. He said he's like a self-tuning luxury automobile. I love that. Yeah. In other words, he looks after himself, no maintenance, and just gives you incredible performance night after night. Picked up now by Hammerlick. We approach about a half a minute to go in the period. Axelsson left it off. Sweden moving it out. Sundin. E.J. Axelsson over the line. Barely onside. It's dumped in. Jonsson's after it. Hammerlick takes him down. Spinning his crossbow. Axelsson's all over him. Good forecheck from P.J. Axelsson. As the puck comes to the neutralized area. The Czechs bring it up. Hammerlick jumped into the play nicely. The shot went wide of Telfrist. Crossbow holds it, waits for the help, picked off, and it's out of the zone. That'll just about do it there for the period, which comes to a close. Three power play goals for Sweden in that second period. They're now dominating. They're up 4 0 after two. Welcome to the Toyota Intermission Report. Barry Melrose and David Amber. Three more power play goals give Sweden yep. a comfortable 4-0 lead heading into the third period. Uh, last night, we had a very close game, though. Canada and USA getting it on in Montreal, and the defending champs in a little bit of trouble. They couldn't handle all the offense coming their way. 
Early in the game, Canada's got those beautiful yellow jerseys on, and gold's <laughs> probably the case right here. Thornton goes out to San Luis. Great play by Thornton. This line was dangerous every time they stepped on the ice. Again, I mentioned I love the fact Canada's on the back of those jerseys. The story of the game to me was Robert S. for the Americans. The Americans went in not knowing if the young goaltenders were good enough. Robert S. answered that question. He was the main reason it was only 1 nothing at the end of the first period. Could have been much, much worse than that. Ash was moving very, very well all across the ring. Ash answered all questions and looked very good, except right there. A Joe Sackick power play goal makes it 2 0 Canada. The U.S. did respond though a few minutes later. Gomez makes a great pass to Garen. Don't forget these two guys played together a little bit with the uh, uh, Devils uh, in the past. Uh, emotions were running high. Mary Lemieux went uh, a little bit uh, ballistic there, sticking up for his goaltender, Marty Brodeur. Uh, Niedermeyer was in a fight. Neither one, Mario or Niedermeyer, were probably in a fight all last year, but that just shows how important these games are to the Canadians and the Americans. Canada pulling out the 2-1 win, the defending Olympic champs, beating the defending World Cup champs. But really, the Americans answering some questions. First of all, they do have a goalie in Robert Ash. And secondly, they might look like the geriatric ward, but these guys, despite their age, 19 of the 23 Americans, older than 30 years of age, at least uh, they've answered the bell. They can play. If I'm uh, Ronnie Wilson, I'm very happy with the game. My uh, goaltender question was answered, and uh, we came back when it looked like we are going to be killed 2-0. So good, uh, good game for the Americans. Well, two weeks today, the NHL's collective bargaining agreement expires, and there's a lot of skepticism from a lot of players that despite the meetings right now going on with the NHL and the NHLPA in Montreal, that this is the last hockey, the World Cup of hockey, that we're going to be seeing in some time. Jeremy Roenick is one of those that thinks this could be the end of the line. Think we'll see hockey this season? No. Whole season done? I think the whole season will be done. And it's unfortunate because our game is in such a... Uh, such a delicate state right now. I think we're, we're, we're going north and we're getting fans involved and we're getting fans excited about the game and, and that the talent level is so big and so great. That Have you heard one positive report? I haven't even heard a whisper of a positive report. Uh, from all reports that I get, it's they walk in, they say, you change your mind, they say no, and they say, well, nice talking to you. Doesn't sound too promising if Jeremy Roenick uh, is indeed right, Barry. Well, Steve Levy's turning into our Mike Wallace. He's doing all the tough <laughs> the interviews. investigative sir. reporting. But uh, don't forget, the one thing I'll say about that, the players are told what to say. They're, they're told by the Players Association that they've got to put a doom and gloom uh, side in this. I've talked to agents. I've talked to players. You're right. Nobody's positive. But, again, I go back to a couple years ago in baseball. We were going through the same thing. Two weeks before the agreement, everyone said it's going to be a year. It's going to be two years. And baseball was smart enough to get a deal done the last moment. I hope that Mr. Bettman and Mr. Goodenow realize what's at stake uh, and and they can sit down and for the betterment of the game and for the betterment of all of us people who love hockey that they will also get a deal done uh, that both sides can live with by the uh, by the 15th September maybe there should be some optimism remember the NHL and the NHLPA meeting for the second straight yep. day in Montreal on the nightcap Canada taking on Slovakia on ESPN 2 the puck drops at 7 o'clock we'll have representatives yep. from both the NHL Good. and the NHLPA to give their side of the story as far as what progress was made if any in Montreal and Steve Levy won't be there you know who's not making progress? The Czech Republic. They haven't scored in this tournament. More from the second intermission next. <laughs> Czech Republic and Sweden in Stockholm. Peter Forsberg and the gang rolling. Wow, Holmstrom makes the play right there. Great pass to Peter. You don't want to give a two-on-one. Uh, look at the situation in the corner. Three up, uh, Swedish players win the physical battle. That's the story of this game. The Czechs are not winning any battle. Any loose puck goes to the Swedes, not the Czechs. Right here, you're going to see a battle again, one in front of the net by Zetterberg. Uh, Czechs just have not come to play. The Swedes look great. 4 nothing Sweden. Three power play goals today. Five power play goals so far in the tournament. Czech Republic, they've yet to score. Third period action's next. ESPN's presentation of the Toyota World Cup of Hockey is brought to you by the Toyota Tundra Devil Cab. Not just big, life-sized. And Samuel Adams. When you're ready for a distinctive brew, Samuel Adams, always a good decision. The Toyota World Cup of Hockey coverage continues from Stockholm right now. Telfast has a shutout going. It's a 4 to nothing lead. The Czech Republic have outshot Sweden. The scoring chances are dead even at 12 apiece. The difference, one of the differences, Telquist, another, Brian, the power play. Two areas that you always are, are extremely important in, in any, any game. 
power play has to come through for you when you get chances. And the Sweden has been brilliant. Matt Sundin has led the way. His line has been outstanding for two games now. And Telquist really has been great. There were times in this game, early on in the game, where the, the Czechs did have some really good scoring chances, some excellent shots. Telquist looked outstanding. I mean, quick, sharp, reading the plays, out, aggressive, challenging. Turned away every single one of them. Yeah. If you're just joining us now, you might think this was a blowout right from the start, but it was not. It was only a one nothing game after one, and then three power play goals. And uh, the first two were about two minutes apart. That opened up the gap, and right now, Team Sweden is in complete control of this one. Four to nothing, and the Czech Republic have their last game to look forward to against Germany. And that's going to be coming up on Friday to try to get a couple of points. But again, everybody gets into the tournament, but you don't want to go into the uh, playoffs 0-3. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they're still having the trouble with the clock here, folks. There were a lot of delays in the second period, and they're still trying to mess around with it a little bit here, too, and get it right before this game, uh, the uh, period starts. Second period lost a lot of its momentum when they had problems with the clock two or three consecutive times. Daniel Alfredson is a really good example of how this Swedish team has played and progressed. I thought he showed his game first before anybody uh, going back to last night's game their first game in the tournament against Germany. He, he was great and, and everybody else has picked it up since then. His line mates were the first ones to pick it up Modine and Sundin but they work hard. The Swedish team has worked hard on the power play and a lot of power plays are guilty of not working hard guys stand around or only half the guys work the other half stand around and say hey I'm open get it to me well this Swedish team hasn't done that because of that their power play is really looking awesome still some clock problems slowing down not just team Sweden but also the Czech Republic as we await the start of this third period the clock is ticking down and we're not sure what they'll do with it but both of them are. It's about time. Just, just, yeah, just go off the stopwatch, and they'll, I think they'll just try to update them because they can't uh, afford to have too many more delays or whatever the problem is. The, the Czech Republic's got to get something going. I mean, for the sake of, of uh, not just you know this third period in this game, but future games. We remind you about more great World Cup hockey coverage coming your way tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight at 7, Team Canada takes on Slovakia in their first game, led by Pavel Dimitro. Tomorrow, Team USA looks to come back from their loss, the tough loss, 2-1 to one to Canada last night when they take on Russia. That's coming your way at 7 p.m. Eastern. It's the Florida World Cup of Hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN2. It's amazing that some of these teams already played in a couple of games and some haven't even started yet. Russia yeah. doesn't play until tomorrow. I guess the place was really rocking in Montreal last night with a Canada-U.S. matchup. Canada coming away with that victory, but there was a little bit of everything Thing. Uh, I know the Swedish players were talking about watching the first play the first period and saying man were those guys flying it was up and down I guess it got a little bit nasty as the game went on yeah. in the later stages that's the kind of stuff we love when you have Canada playing against the US team it's terrific and the tournament is just getting underway and it looks like we're ready to get underway with the third you're watching the Toyota World Cup of Hockey here on ESPN Sweden in blue Czech Republic in white Sweden leads four to nothing thanks to three second period power play goals puck was lost right there but the Czech Republic couldn't take advantage and now it's Alfredson with Modine and Sundin over the line into the corner it goes picked up by Alfredson centering deflected out of the zone backing it up as Lidstrom that was a communication thing by the Czech defense Yuri Slager expected his partner to go get that puck he never even turned around to look they didn't go Alfredson went and got it and they got a scoring chance Bokun after juggling leaves it off for David Baborny coming off two straight 20 or more goal seasons with Columbus. Baborny takes it in over the line, gets the return into the corner. To the left of Talquist, now it's left off there. Played out to the point. Fisher's high wrister went wide. In the corner it goes, now the foot pass out of the zone. Gary Fisher's back at his own blue line and will hold off as his team is trying to change in the flock. Off the boards, Forsberg with a goal tonight, leaves it off, he'll get it back. Forsberg's pass up the middle, lead pass off the skate of Zetterberg. On the boards it goes, Czech Republic looking to move it out, they'll go the opposite way. Off the long clearance from Straka. Off the stick, and into the corner, Talquist lets it go. Matthias Nordstrom with a flip out of the zone. All the way down ice. Gary Fisher, first man on it. He'll get the return pass and start back up ice. A 4-0 lead for Sweden. That one hits the netting. There's another break. 
Well, we'll take a look at the two different pools that are going on, the European pool and the North American pool. Up till this point, Sweden's got two points. The Finns have two points. Germans and the Czechs so far with nothing. And on the North American side, you get Canada with two from the win last night over the U.S. And the Russians and the Slovaks haven't even played yet. Sweden in the driver's seat right now. Barring a total collapse here, they'll end the night in first. As this shot goes in wide, it bounced in front of Telfus. A strange bounce there. Picked up behind the net. Sakura trying to flip it for Eliash. Flipped around the boards. Eliash getting it back. Sakura's turnaround shot went wide. Czech Republic after it. Martin Skula flips it in front. That one's blocked. Deep slot past Reichel. Down nice it goes. Early, early in the game, Eliash and Sakura had a couple of quick chances and showed some speed through the middle part of the game. They were lost, along with the rest of the Czechs offensively. Showed a little bit of flair there trying to get to the Swedish net. On those boards, Vlasic trying to keep it in. Had some help. Back to the neutral zone. Vlasic's pass blocked. Marcus Nielsen over the line for Sweden. He shoots it in wide. Dopita off those near boards. Looks to move it out of the zone. Can't do it. Lidstrom kept it in. Marcus Nielsen looking, trying to flip it in front for Holmstrom. Instead, it's the Czech Republic who clear it out. Back into the Sweden zone. Nicholas Lidstrom stops right there. Finds Janssen. Janssen with four shots on goal tonight leads Team Sweden. This one going deep. The touch is made by Fisher. The icing call next face off back in the Sweden zone. Speaking of Janssen's, I was talking to Jorgen Janssen, the only Swedish player who plays in the Swedish league. And he said he was getting used to the North American ice surface, which means that there is two line passes. And that took him a while. But he said, that's the way I want to play. He said, I would rather have the two line pass in our game. And to further that, some of our guys were talking to Yari Curry, the great Hall of Famer, who is assistant coach with the Finn national team. And then Yari told some guys that they would like to see the red line back in their game because they don't like the way the game is being played by young guys. Oh. Avalot took the shot, and it may have been deflected by Ruchinski. In any case, the shutout is gone from Telchrist, and the Czech Republic now have the first thing positive on their night tonight. A couple of, couple of guys going to the front of the net. Might have been Ruchinski, or might have been Marty Havlat, who went to the front of the net, too, for the change of direction here. Havlat took the shot, excuse me, and, and Ruchinski either got his foot or his stick on it. And uh, you can see Telchrist, the goaltender, was out challenging, but the change of direction, there's just not much you can do about it. I believe it's Ruchinski from Pavlot. We'll wait for the official call. That is right. So, the Czech Republic have their first goal in two games. And we'll see what this does now. 4-1 sweep. Johnson's pass right side. The Swedes break out. Alfredson has Modine in front of him. Knocked down by the Czechs. Near boards. Taken over the line. Now back over the line. Looking. Roger couldn't get a shot off. Puck is free. Possible. Oh, nice. By Telchrist. Could have been a 4-2 game quickly. Quick shot taken. Telchrist stopped that one. The checks are coming. And now it's cleared the other way. The star players sense when they get a little bit of a scene. Now that the Czechs have got a little bit of hope. Finally something dropped for them. That's their first goal in the tournament in two games. So they want to try to step on the gas here a little bit. And they're capable of it. Yager knocked it down with a glove but couldn't get the stick on it. Yager in the corner. Five-time NHL scoring champ played it out toward the point, kept in there and driven in wide. Hammerlick on it. Turn around, tip. Telchrist, good, good stop. Big save to make after giving up a goal by Telchrist to try to stop any momentum that the Czechs might get. Absolutely, and, and it was Yager going to the front of the net. That was a terrific spin-around shot by Hammerlick, who fielded the puck off the wall, and he just threw it towards the net, and Yager saw the possibilities coming. He went to the front of the net, deflected it, so Telquist had to make the initial save, and then there was a rebound. But this line has really come on here on this last shift, and given Czechs some more life, after the goal by Ruchinski, Yager and Prospel and Straka have done a terrific job here of getting pucks to the net. Here's the last one. Good deflection there. You see how Tuckless is all over it, and he covers it up quickly. Meanwhile, Sweden has called a 30-second timeout. That's a good time for us to remind you that they are playing by NHL rules. 
ESPN2 brings you more World Cup hockey action tomorrow. Preliminary round action skates on starting at 1.30 when Finland looks to continue their winning ways, traveling to Cologne to take on Germany. And at 7 p.m., Team USA in their second game, they will be taking on Russia, the Toyota. World Cup of hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN2. There's a look at Hardy Nielsen on the right side. That's Alf Dahlin. A lot of NHL fans will remember him. Alfie was great along the boards. We were laughing this morning. Alf Dahlin was so good along the boards that they had to redo the advertising signs along the boards after every period because <laughs> he wiped them off with his good work on the wall. Matthias Nordstrom looking to move it out of the zone. He does. Off camera light. Outside. Late offside. Outside. Nordstrom holds it. LA Kings defenseman has it blocked. Nordstrom will try it again. Head for Forsberg, he's bumped. Zetterberg keeps it going. Zetterberg's had a very strong game tonight. Even stronger than last night. Sakura lost it. Near boards. Sweden keeping it in play at the point. Now it's out of the zone. Westrom's turnaround. Wanted Zetterberg. That's cut off. Eliash left it for Weichel. Lead pass trying to spring Sakura. Telchrist is there. That one was blocked behind the net. Not a good clearance by the goaltender. Checks up. Zitlitsky, big shot, and he scored. I'm not sure how that got through. I thought Telkus had it. We talked about Zitlitsky, and what a shot he has. That's the first time that we saw it tonight. 14 goals last year as a rookie for the Nashville Predators, and so, many, so much of it was on the power play. This guy has a great sense of things offensively, but the Swedes just don't get the puck out of the zone. It's good work down low to get the turnover, then they'll get it back to Zidlitsky, who's able to power into it from the face-off circle. And it looked like, I thought, uh, Telquist had it at first. It looked like it squeezed right underneath the arm, and then he tried yeah. to plead that there was uh, goaltender interference, but he was actually piled into after the puck was already in the net. Good shot by Zidlitsky. Good look at that replay, too, to see exactly where that puck went. So now it's a 4-2 game and a lot of time left. A lot of time left. And, and the Swedes are flat. I mean, they used their timeout already, and they, they shook them up a little bit, and now the Czechs come right back and score on them anyway. So now the ball is really in the, in the Czech court. They've regained themselves. They've got a little bit of momentum, and now it's the Swedes. We'll see what they're made of here to regain their game. Imagine if the Czech Republic get another goal before Sweden would score. Here's Nilsson. Blocked by Hammerlick. Skula around the boards. Has some help there. And back into the zone by Axelson. Skula again. Try to leave it for Havlat. Now it's Verborny. Checks have found their legs again here in the third. Quick shot. Telfus will hang on and get a faceoff coming up. We have a game though right now from Stockholm. 4-2 Sweden leads. This is the Toyota World Cup of Hockey on ESPN from Stockholm. All of a sudden, we've got a game. It's 4-2. Sweden have led 4-0. Minor penalties for roughing at 6-19 on Holmstrom and Ruchinski as we went to break. So it's 4-on-4 four four hockey and a little momentum going the Czech's way as we went to break. That was a worthwhile penalty there for Thomas Holmstrom because he took the other guy off with him. And, and Sweden's flat. So Holmstrom knows how to stir things up and get them back in. I think they have to get their nose dirty again. Crossbow flips it. That's Yager holding it in. At the left point. Quick one by Slager. Deflected. Oh! Rolling in, but Sundin <laughs> cut it off. Incredible. Here is Sundin coming back over the line. And as he dropped it off, an offside. And also, just good, good basic stuff there from the Czechs. Getting pucks to the front of the net. Getting traffic in front. Getting some sticks on it. Deflecting it. Think, things are starting to move. They're, they're starting to show signs of some life here. That one just leaked through Telquist. Matt Sundin said, no problem, I got this. Yeah. Looked easy there, but if there was anyone near that from the Czech Republic, it would have been a 4-3 game. 4-on-4 four four hockey continues. Better than a minute left in that situation. Matthias Olin with it. Sweden was on cruise control, 4-0 at the end of the second period and now momentum has turned. That's the problem with cruise control. Sometimes it doesn't shut off. <laughs> that clock problem too slowed the game down second period. It came to a halt. Several minutes on a delay. And then the guys got back together near the end of that period. 
They probably would have put that time on into the third period if it was closer to the end, but it really wasn't. Puck is dumped in. Sweden back on it. As you look back at that timeout, it looks like it was the wrong time to do it, but I think the Swedes were right in taking the timeout the way they did. They were chastising their players. They, you know, snap out of it, boys. Let's go. Meanwhile, the Czechs came right back and scored after that. But I, I think the thought process was right from the coaches. It was a good time to take it. Behind the net it goes. Bokun leaves it. Slowed down there. But Vlasic has some help. Slager spins, trying to get free. It's blocked. Kept in play. Left circle. Nordstrom knocked out. Rebound. Saving it by Bokun off Jonsson. Jonsson again. That's stopped by Thomas Bokun. He wants to keep that puck rolling and not slow down the game because the checks are flying. Down that left side. Over the line. Quick shot. Oh. Saved Telquist. Rebound in front is blocked. An incredible turn of events here. All the pressure against Sweden. What a block by Marcus Ragnarsson. That very well may have saved the goal. Excellent puck movement down low by the Czechs. An offside there as the penalties expired. And it's back to five on five hockey. I'm not so sure that Caberlet might have made one of these saves down low as the Swedes had a really good chance. Number 15 White is going to end up diving right I think there. Yeah 15 yeah. White the defenseman good made call. that save because Bokun was trying to get back. I think that pucks in. It was Jorgen Janssen who had the backhander so he couldn't get much on it. But good goaltending there by Thomas Caberlet. Czech Republic laying it up ice. Over the line they come and as Elias shot it it was offside. Right now let's head back to our ESPN studios in Bristol. David Amber has the Sam Adams tournament update. Well, last night Canada beat the U.S. of A 2-1. It was a costly win though as Ed Jovanovski is now done for what looks like the rest of the tournament. He is out. That leads our Sam Adams World Cup update. Out with a sprain and fractured, an MCL sprain and a fractured rib. He's done. Scott Hannon, he'll replace Jovo. Chris Draper and Jose Theodore added to the lineup tonight. Canada and Slovakia tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN2, and we will also hear from both sides, the NHL and the NHL Players Association during that game. Back to our coverage in Stockholm. It's a 4-2 lead for Team Sweden over the Czech Republic. We've shown some life here in this third period. Now we're back to where we were in the first period. Yes. I mean, there was really good feel. It was back, back and forth. There was some jump. And then uh, the uh, Swedish team just took everything away from the Czechs. Took away all their heart and soul and everything through the middle part of the game. But it's back now for the Czechs. Well, Chris was a Superman in the first period, if you will, but he's been more human here in this third period. They put two by. Matthias Olin, far side to Sean Chris. You can see it in the way they're skating. The Czechs have that jump back. Rokun leaves it. Had to be tough in the locker room after two periods, down 4 0. But they have come to life here. Olin's pass off Nanslin. Neutralized back. Up ice, nice turn there. In deep, a little holding from Sharncrest, but play continues on. Around those boards. Held up now by the Czechs. Jinsky pass, far side, Pospel shooting at its block. Picked up by Peter Forsberg. Sweden's on the go. Forsberg and Zetterberg. Drop pass, too fancy there. Picked off by the Czech Republic. Up for number 75, Vlasic. He may get this back. He and Zetterberg bump. The check played out to the left point. Quick shot. Picked it wide by Telquist. Into the slot it goes. Forsberg skates out. A careful flip as he goes to the bench for a change. Thomas Vlasic's got a lot of guts. He wants to go up the middle between Nordstrom and Ragnarsson. Those two guys are like two pinballs out there. They'll punish you. You try to go drive up the middle on them too often. Sweden on it. Far boards. Jonsson. Over the line, he's flying. Jonsson for Johansson who missed the target. And now he's spun around and taken down as play continues. The Swedish fans wanted a penalty. The ice is getting bad. That puck jumped on Johansson right when he went to pull the trigger, jumped over a stick, and he hardly got any shot at all. Meanwhile, the Czechs nearly had too many men on the ice, and now they'll bring it up ice. Gaining that center line, dumping it in. The chase is on. Paulson's after it. Dug up by Ruchinski, looking to center it. Instead, he'll flip it. The Borny trying to center it out in front. Near board pass. Good hard check there by Hablot. Jonsson 
Intercepted Ruchinski. Rister saved by Telquist. But Bordy redirected it. That's one of the best saves of the night, if not the best one from Telquist. He's given up a couple of goals in this game, but they haven't been his fault. Telquist continues to be extremely sharp, and he's given this uh, uh, Swedish team life now. They need some. Hanged off the boards. Nielsen after that. to knock it down. The Czech Republic fly back. Sikora's over the line. Snaps it high. It goes off the netting. There's a whistle and a break in the action. Sweden four, Czech Republic two. Prosperl and Sundin in for this faceoff left side of Telquist after Telquist has made a couple of big saves to keep this one a two goal game. Flipped around those boards left side. Czech Republic keeping it in. Straka with a butt. Down low. Centering pass is blocked. And Sweden will just send it down the length of the ice. Icing waved off as Bokun came out to play it. Czech Republic have the momentum and also the fresher legs. They did not play last night. Sweden did. We'll see if that has any effect. I know one thing. If the Czech Republic gets the next goal, it will have some effect. Right now, though, Telchrist has kept it 4-2. And early on in, in the year like this, the players aren't in as good shape as they are later on. And it's hot from here. The ice is not very good. And so the Swedes will be feeling the effects, although they have spread out the workload. They did yes, last they night. They spread yeah. out the workload again here tonight. And you are dealing with world-class athletes. A couple of them are starting to show the signs a little bit of slowing down, though. Have a lot back here to save by Telquist again. He's had to make three or four big ones here in the third period. A 9-2 edge. Now 10-2, actually. I can update myself. 10-2. Czech Republic here in the third. Telquist has looked good. I mean, and for my money, he is still definitely the number one goalie for Sweden. He makes that stop. The deflection it goes to the corner. Four players battle, including Eliash. It comes back to the near side, and it's just going to be cleared. Bokun again out to make the play for Zidlitsky, whose goal made it a 4 2 game. Eric Zidlitsky snaps it in from center ice. Eliash leaving it off. Luchinsky looks up, finding Eliash. Avila try to set up shop in the slot. Instead, it goes out to the left point. Zelitsky free at the right circle. Cross rink, left circle, missing Ruchinsky. Back hitter cleared out to the point. Right side, Zelitsky again. Right back to Zelitsky. Deflects out center point. Big shot. Hammerlick is deflected wide. Into the corner. Avila tries to center. And Sweden just trying to relieve some pressure here. Can't clear it out. Center point again. Hammerlick drive, save. Rebound back hitter. Score on the back hitter. From Elias, 4-3 now with 5.35 to go. Great comeback, whether they win, lose, or tie. Oh, oh, oh. The fans in the seats have got their hands on their head. They're looking around going, what has happened? Patrick Elias missed a great scoring chance before this. But look at the touch and the creativity from number 62 right there. Look at this. Backwards, between his own feet, yeah, he got a little bit of luck. But underneath Telquist, prior to that, Elias had had a really good cross-ice pass from Zidlitsky from the point, and, and he just kind of messed it up. He wasn't so much checked as he tried to rush his shot and never accomplished what he wanted to accomplish. But great players, you don't give them two chances because they score the second time almost every time. Three goals in 11 minutes and 13 seconds now for the Czech Republic. It's a one-goal hockey game. And remember, it's NHL rules. There could be overtime here. It'll be just like the NHL. Five minutes, four-on-four four hockey. Big shot from the left side, deflected into the crowd. Don't go away. We've got an exciting one from Stockholm. 4-3. Sweden still leads. Luchinski, Zidlitsky, and Elias, the goal scorers, in just over 11 minutes. We have a hockey game now in Stockholm. It was one-sided, a 4-0 Sweden lead, and now it's just 4-3. Czech Republic holding with Prosbold, getting the pads together, and squeezing his Telchrist. Another face-off is coming up. Vinny Prosbold has been really good in this game in spurts. There was a time through the middle of the game when he and the rest of the forwards basically disappeared. They couldn't get the puck. They couldn't make two passes together. Once they got their jump and once they got that first goal and just got a little bit of a feel, now it's incredibly different. 
See, 36 shots to 20. The edge for the Czech Republic. Flipped around the boards now by Straka to the near side. That is Janssen. Hanged off the board. Sweden doing everything they can to just clear that puck out of the zone. ESPN2 is your ticket to more great World Cup hockey. Coming your way tonight and tomorrow night. Tonight at 7 p.m., Team Canada takes on Pablo Dimitri and Slovakia. Tomorrow, Team USA versus Russia at 7 Eastern. The Toronto World Cup of hockey right here on ESPN and ESPN2 in Canada. Happy to go without Ed Jovanovsky. That's one of the dangers of these tournaments yeah. for NHL clubs. You can lose players. He's out with what we were told was a strained MCL and a fractured rib. What a shame for Ed Jovanovsky and for Canada. Now that's that's Rob Blake, Chris Pronger, who couldn't even start the tournament and make the team because of injuries. And now Eddie Jovanovsky, three of their main key guys over the last uh, couple of tournaments that have been international. Jovanovsky out for Canada. In the corner, that is Axelson. Just over four minutes to go here in this third period. Sellout crowd watching 13,850. They're in Stockholm. This is a great building, too. The atmosphere is terrific, and the fans have been into this game the entire way. Right now, they're wondering about the outcome. It was not in doubt at the start of the period. It's in doubt now. The board's clearance by the Czechs. Under four minutes to play, regulation time. Icing is the call. Next face off the other way. I just want to go back for a moment again to the, what I was talking about earlier, talking about Jorgen Janssen and, and referring to, this, to the uh, European game here, not having the center red line and not having two line passes because it's been considered in, in the North American game in the NHL taking the red line out. Well, you've got the Finns and the Swedes here for the most part are saying, we want it back in. So you have to be careful what you wish for sometimes. It changes the game definitely. It opens it up sometimes, but it creates other caveats that you don't even know about and Finland would like to put it back in their game and so would the Swedes this game continues on this tournament NHL rules but not involved in any of the proposed changes that were talked about during the early summer months Czech Republic scrambling in their own zone Michael right lost it there Forsberg goes after it team Sweden up 4-3 with over three minutes still to play in regulation time Backhander in front from Forsberg. It's loose in the slot. And the Czech Republic will pick it up and bang it off the boards. Picked off there. That was just good hard work. And it was Zetterberg. Zetterberg did most of it along the boards there, setting the tone. And then Forsberg taking the puck from behind the net and just muscling it out front. Sean Chris dumps in as he gained the center line. Frederick Modine spun around. In the corner, that's Alfredson. Hard work from him from start to finish. Modine as well. That looked like a cross check. The must. He got the benefit of the doubt there deep. Flipped up off the boards and the Czech Republic come back. Across the line, looking for that tying goal. Alfredson chasing from behind. Yager plays it out at the point. Hammer like a high shot. And deflected behind the net. Czechs looking for three men back deep behind Telfus now into the corner. 4-3 Sweden leading. They'll get this puck free. Modine skates it to neutralize and dumps it. Still over two minutes to go. And regulation time. From 60, the Hamerlick shot is blocked. He got it back. Flips it in front, but it's behind Dopita. Johansson's pass. Couldn't clear it out. Zidlitsky in deep. Zidlitsky coming in, and it's blocked. Backhander is blocked as well. Another try from Dopita. Turnaround by Yager is blocked. Dead center. Hamerlick, a high shot. Blocked in front. Delayed penalty here. Let's see what the call is in front. Holding call. Oh, the checks were, the net. checks were really going for it there. They had tremendous pressure on. Yarmir Yager was double shifting. He could just smell it, and the great players always do. I don't know who's going to end up with the penalty here. It might even be Yager, but there was a lot of bodies in front. Oh, Janssen, Jorgen, Andreas. Andreas Johansson is going to go. But look, look at all the white jersey. Four guys down there. Zidlitsky, the defenseman, had jumped down into the play. He tried to force it through. Yager was in front. Guys were all over the place. Sweden was hanging on by a thumbnail there, and they were able to do so before they got it down the ice. Yo Andreas Johansson for holding. So, it was exciting. This entire third period could be even more exciting now with that penalty up there on Sweden. I was about to speculate about pulling the goaltender to try to get that tying point. They don't necessarily have to do that now. And that we have a clock malfunctioning again. So we'll have to check back to see how much time is actually remaining on it. You were talking before about uh, Michael Telfus. You noticed something during the commercial break. 
He's got Boya Salming on yeah. his helmet. Yeah, sometimes they say that goalies have eyes in the back of their head, and Telquist has used his own two eyes really well, and I think he's got an extra set of two eyes on the top of his head, and they belong to Boreas Salming, a great star Hall of Fame player of Swedish descent that played about 20 years in the National Hockey League for the Toronto Maple Leafs, where Telquist plays. So I think those two sets of eyes of Boreas Salming are, are helping out Telquist as well. This has been uh, some really good saves from both goaltenders. Thomas Volkun yeah. has made several good saves in this game as well, too. He was shelled through the middle part. Didn't have much chance on the goals that he let in, but it's been Telquist has been under siege in the last 10 minutes. So 146 to go in the game. The minor penalty up there on Johansson. Volkun right now is in goal, but he's out in the high slot area, depending on what happens in this faceoff. He skates to the bench. Two extra men now for the Czech Republic as they try to tie it. Nets empty as Alfredson picked it off. Daniel Alfredson, neutral ice, gaining that center line, then lost the puck. No call there. The crowd's enraged. Played out in front, behind. Now to the left point. Zidlinski holds. High shot, deflected wide. Now you're hearing the whistles, which is like American booing, as Brian pointed out before. Daniel Alfredson was just playing wrong. I mean, he, that puck had to get down the ice. It, it turned out to be an excellent scoring chance for the Czech, the Czech team coming back the other way. Alfredson should have got that puck all the way deep inside the zone. From center, dumped in. They're announcing a minute to play in the hockey game. Played out at the point. That shot is redirected behind the net. Sikora looks up. Played it out. Peverly oh. shot is wide. Zidlitsky's after. Now it goes behind the net. Flipped in front. Never got there. Approaching a half a minute to go in the game. And the jeering continues. Zidlitsky shot. And not knowing where it was was Telchris, but he's got it. And that's where you don't dare move. Zidlitsky's a heck of a player, folks. You've got to keep your eye on this guy. Number three for the Czech Republic has been outstanding in this game. That was a great shot on goal. The Czechs continue to move the puck around, putting incredible pressure. And Telquist just senses this. He gets over to the post, and I think he was a little bit lucky, too. But we have to give him an awful lot of credit for getting that early position. He was worried about the wraparound. He was worried about that play into the crease. I think Borja Selming's two eyes helped as well. And Zidlitsky got that shot right on the short side. Telquist made the save. Off that draw, Elias fires it, and it's just wide as well. Picked up by Cavalier around the boards. Elias again, glove by Telkris. He's their number one guy. Michael Telkris is the number one guy for Sweden. He has played much better than Tommy Salo did in the win against Germany last night. Telquist has been outstanding, and he is holding on by a thread here because the Czechs are just, they're just motoring. And, and it's the Swedes who are reacting and counter-reacting to everything that the Czechs are doing right now, but it's Telquist that's bailing them out every time. 16-2. Can you believe it? Oh, Czech Republic. Baby. Shots on goal in the third period. But this is the Czech team we thought would see when the tournament started. Yeah. Took a while for us to see them. They're here. And this has been a big test for Sweden. I mean, you would like everything to be a solid, nice, natural progression. You just get better and better as the game goes on. That's the way Sweden played against Germany last night. This has not been that way at all. Faceoff coming up. To the left side of Telkus. Remember, Sweden already used their timeout. The Czech Republic could use theirs if they wanted to. Yeah, I don't think they want to right now. They got yeah. so much momentum. I don't think those guys are too tired out there, the Czech team, I mean. And uh, they want to keep the Swedish guys tired out there if possible. But momentum is the key right now. Clock was adjusted for the up team time. 19 seconds left in the hockey game in regulation time. Out at the right point. Net still empty for the Czech side. Two extra skaters. Gavorni behind the net. Has some help. Gavorni looking. It's blocked at the side. Continues the puck movement behind the net. And the Czechs get it. Near circle. That's going to do it. 
Game over. Nice comeback though for the Czech Republic, but they lose. That's the Czech Republic team that we expected to see. They showed it when they scored those three goals in this third period. Big difference. The Swedes know they were a bit lucky. They hung on. Telfus was great. Final score, Sweden wins 4-3. Stay tuned for more great action. Joy the World Cup of Hockey comes away at 7 tonight. Canada looks for their second win of the tournament against Slovakia. Coming up next, the 2003 San Diego Chargers yearbook. So long, everyone, from Stockholm.